Warriors taking dead aim at another national title. They, of course, have already wrapped up the South regardless of what happens here. So in two weeks, they will play the North winner for the Big 12 championship. Texas Tech and Oklahoma coming up next. Head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. All right, coach, we know you can put points on the board. How do you keep them from putting points on the board? I uh, just make routine plays. Good luck, coach. Thanks. Texas Tech won the toss and they will defer. So it means that Coach Bob Stoops and the number one team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, will receive and have the first series. And we have got one NCAA leader after another. Oklahoma three team leaders there, pass, total defense, scoring offense, and of course two individuals. Texas Tech with two team and a couple of individuals down there, Simmons and Henderson. Referee today is a veteran of Big 12, John Lorry. He's a good one, and his umpire is Steve Story. And the weather issue today will be the wind. As you look at it, it is blowing briskly from right to left. And that gives you an idea. We're here in West Texas, folks. That's just a gentle summer breeze <laughs> down here. 25 miles an hour, the flag flapping up there in the breeze. Ball on the tee is Keith Toogood, the redshirt freshman. Played high school football at Dallas Christian, and we are underway in Lubbock. And with the breeze at his back, it's out of the end zone. And coming out on the 20 yard line, Jason White, the leader in the battle for the Heisman Trophy, according to all those straw polls, and the nation's number one quarterback as far as pass efficiency. Brady is concerned. 36 touchdowns and only six INTs as he brings the offense out. Bob Stoop told us yesterday that he could put more offense in with this quarterback than he could in the last two years. He really understands the whole package. And they come out and put Jason under center here, moving into the wind, and that will dictate the offensive game plan. Quick drop, Jason scrambling off to the left and got about a yard before he was brought down. Let's take a look now at our SBC starting lineups. Now, this offensive line's a good one, but there's that one number that Texas Tech really was paying attention to. Five sacks they gave up. And all the works, expected to see some time here in the backfield along with Kiwan Jones, number 47 and number 20, and a Lou Grozer finalist. That's the honor for Trey DiCarlo, their kicking specialist. And it will be second and long as that Red Raider defense Look tough there on first down. Four down linemen. You see the 4-3 look defensively against OU with four receivers out wide. White's in trouble, and he is sacked. There is sack number one. Back at the 11-yard line, he is taken down, and Adele Duckett, his 13th sack of the season. It's a blitz right here. John Saldi also comes right through the middle. Much number five runs right through the block. He's in on it. And then Duckett turns right over to him right from the start. Texas Tech has blitzed on first and second down. Ronaldo works number 47, an excellent receiver, alongside Jason White. Mark Clayton, the go-to wideout, number nine, comes through the formation. White looks right, fires now to Rankins. They will not get the first down. It is three and out, and an impressive defensive performance by the Red Raiders as Dawson, number 96, makes the play for the Red Raiders. Al Welker, and you can see the NCAA records that he holds there, better than 1,700 yards. He's a young man from Oklahoma. He was being recruited by Stoops. Stoops did not have a scholarship. Coach Leach had one down here, and he was able to convince Welker to come a little bit south of Oklahoma City, and they're happy to have it with that win now. This will be a tough punt for Blake Ferguson. Welker runs up, hit right at the 45-yard line on the move, but it is a short field that B.J. Simmons will be working with after the 30-yard punt into the win. 83 yards away from breaking Ty Detmer's all-time record with 5,106 yards, 47 touchdowns. They spread the field. They will make Oklahoma defend now sideline to sideline. 
one of the quickest releases you will ever see. He's got a good running back. We watched him yesterday over there at the coaches' tape, Torian Henderson. They open with Henderson, and Henderson muscles his way close to the 40-yard line, which would be about a five-yard gain. Dan Cody makes the play, and here's our SBC Texas Tech starting lineup. 49 career starts for Toby Cecil. He anchors that offensive line, senior from Richardson, Texas. And now, folks, take a look at this list. 60-plus receptions for each of them. And Walker, we've already met him. He returned that punt. And second down coming up for B.J. Simmons here. Back in the shotgun. They work most of the time from the gun in this spread. Simmons has good time going for the touchdown. And he overthrew the wide out. It'll now be third down and five coming up as he took it deep to Carlos Francis. The Oklahoma defense. And Dan Cody, wherever you go around the Big 12, folks, his name quickly comes up. Dan Cody should be on the all Big 12 team this year. This is the third starting middle linebacker. Coach Bob Stoops told us last night that Gayron Allen has earned the honor. Now, strength versus strength. Dante Nicholson, well, basically, they'll stay in the nickel against this offense all game long. He'll press up toward the line of scrimmage. And right now, we note three down linemen for Oklahoma. They bring backers to the gaps. They can't get to Simmons. He drops it off over the middle now. Glover, and that's a first down. So they convert a third down. Rodney Poole makes the stop, but they could not, Gary, get to the quarterback. Oklahoma came with actually six defensive backs, but they stayed in zone. And when you're only rushing three, as accurate as B.J. Simmons is, you better latch on to these short receivers because he throws the ball short as good as anyone you've ever seen in college football. Texas Tech lost a heartbreaker in Austin last week to the Horns. You can ask Mac Brown and that staff, they moved the ball. There's the end around, a familiar formation that they bring all game long, and that was with Wilker. Now, Wilker, along with having 947 receiving yards and 369 punt return yards. He's also run for 126 this year. So he's a bit of a triple threat man, number 27. He picked up a few yards on that first down. So Mike Leach's familiar offense moving the ball again. And the NCAA record for a 12 game season, 5,229 total yards this year for B.J. Simmons, an amazing story. Second down and six. Quick hitter. And stepping out of bounds at that first down marker that time. And so B.J. Simmons went back now to the outside. And Welker moves the chains. That is one of four different types of screens that Texas Tech will play throughout this game. The way they can neutralize a very good Oklahoma pass rush is with different types of screens and a very deep shotgun. Look how deep Welker is back there when he lines up in shotgun. He's six or seven yards deep. That doesn't allow those with those big spl splits, those guys to get him on that short game. Ball is at the Sooner 22-yard line. Here's Henderson. Cuts back to daylight and runs inside the 15-yard line. Dan Cody again from behind. But I can't tell you how impressed we were watching Henderson on tape against Texas and here today in a couple of carries he's been an impressive running back against this very very good OU defense. Well those splits of Texas Tech means that every time Henderson gets the ball he already has space. It's almost all draw plays. The coaches say they'll maintain the splits as long as the offensive linemen handle the men in front of them. If they start to have trouble and need help they tighten up the splits. Coming back now with Henderson Close to a first down. Jammed, you could see Nicholson joining Jackson, Tommy Harris, all in on that stop for the Sooners. So this one's going to be very close. Laurie's up there with one of his linesmen. And they're going to bring the chains out to measure this as we look here at Mike Leach. An interesting, very interesting creative coach. He's a graduate of BYU. A bit of a vagabond until he landed here at Texas Tech down in Lubbock. And he has done an excellent creative job. And the chains move again now to the 12-yard line. There's the backup quarterback, Sonny Cumbie, the junior from Snyder, Texas, listening in. And B.J. Simmons 
Cliff Kingsbury played ahead of him for three years. Simmons is a redshirt senior, if you will. He was redshirted way back his, his freshman season. So this is his fifth year here, and it is magnificent what he has done in terms of putting up numbers as a first-year starter. There's the splits that Gary told you about. They spread that field. They make it tough for the defenders. Four down linemen for OU, the inside shovel pass, and it was read beautifully, and Allen makes the stop. And so Simmons was asked about this Red Raider offense. It's tough to really put into words, but, you know, we just, we just expect the most, and... Uh, Every time we take the field with an attitude, and, and we look to score every time we take the field. That's what they're looking to do here, but that last positive play by the OU defense put them now in second and long. So you would expect to see wide receivers running every which way now. Back in the gun is Simmons. Blitz is coming. Don't get there. Deflected incomplete, however. So the pressure works. And they force an incompletion, and it's third down. I think big Tommy Harris got his hand on that one. His left hand, he was running a stunt. And because of those big splits, it takes forever for Tommy to get there. You see him, he's at the nose tackle. He kind of comes out, goes to his left, and reads the eyes, and then just steps up and pops it with his left hand because that saved the completion. Here's the third down for Simmons and the Red Raiders. Leach would like a touchdown and not a field goal attempt. He had some kicking problems last week in Austin. Simmons flushed with a little bit of a gimpy left knee, runs hard right, throws end zone incomplete, threw it away. And it's field goal time for the Red Raiders. And so the Sooners are pressed into the red zone, and the defense then stands up for Coach Stoops. Now there's the field goal man, <laughs> Keith too good and uh, not automatic is it no it's not everybody's looking at Mike Leach and going what are you going to do here, here? he comes <laughs> that would have been a very positive start for the three touchdown underdog Red Raiders wind at his back now left hash right-footed kicker Dupree Scoble out of Dallas Hillcrest the Scoble family the third generation of the Scobles play Easy. in Lubbock. And he puts them ahead. So Keith too good was very good on uh, that field goal attempt, and it's 3-0 Tech. Huge crowd on hand. They just opened up that sitting room only section, if you will, <laughs> behind the goalpost. Some of the students poured down in there. And with this breeze at two goods back, who knows? They may wind up with a with a football up there. The last one went out of the end zone, and we would expect this one to do likewise. So the wind have to be a major, major factor here before this day is done. So it'll be coming out the 20-yard line. Gives us a chance to take a look at the BCS presented by Allstate. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The Buckeyes scratch him out. Go down to number eight. Uh -oh. Not a good week for the computers, folks. <laughs> they were touting those two. They had one of those computers at TCU up to third. So the battle now, USC and LSU for that vaunted two spot. Of course, Oklahoma has to take care of business right here. They are number one clearly. I really feel that the wind affects Oklahoma's passing game more than Texas Tech. Texas Tech likes to throw short. Oklahoma likes to throw those corner deep routes. The back in the eye. They will run Jones for a body yard. And Patrice Majando, Mawamba. There's a name. There's a mouthful for you, making a stop for the uh, for the Red Raiders. And he does it. And let's check in with Jack. Gary, you're absolutely right. I talked to Chuck Long before the game, talking about how the wind was going to affect them. He said, Jack, when the wind is at our backs, it won't affect us at all. But boy, going into the wind, he said, we're going to have to cut back on a lot of our long passes. Strikes me that they'll start to look a little bit like maybe Texas Tech. They'll try to, yep. Now the last series and their first series was three and out. Now in a foot race, firing to Rankins and picking up a good seven yards before Jabari Smith, the junior corner, wraps him out. Now the Texas Tech D, and he's already had now, you can change that school record to 13 and a half sacks <laughs> because Duckett had one of the first series of this game. And, of course, Brock Stratton, the freshman, he lines up the defense. And uh, with the young defense, sometimes they'll get in the wrong spots. And uh, coaches are very concerned. And Ryan Acock playing his last game at home. 
leads the team in tackles and six interceptions. Here's another third down. Third and three. Unusual to see this Sooner offense bogged down against anybody. Kept it moving. 40 yard line. 45. Breaking free. Clayton spins inside the 30 yard line. Mark Clayton, who came into the season sort of a forgotten wide out of the Big 12 with Woods and Williams and all the other great ones, is now playing just as well, if not better, than any of them. Right out of the bunch, as Jack said, OU trying to be like Texas Tech. That little short passing game, remember, OU must have it in their playbook because it came from Mike Leach when he used to be the coordinator. Boy, what a guy after the catch Mark Clayton is. Terrific athlete, as you can see, and after the 45-yard gain inside the 30, and here's Works, slips one tackle, but not the second. We check in for the first time today with uh, John Saunders back in New York, John. You can't give me enough highlights on those two games, good buddy. They battle for number two now. We're looking at number one right here with Oklahoma and talking about great wide receivers. Mike Williams at USC, as good as anybody. High, incomplete. Had a step and couldn't get it. So it'll be third down. Well, Monday night, folks, the disappointing Giants against the disappointing Buccaneers <laughs> at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Jim Fossil, his job is on the line, folks. Now, the Buccaneers are going to be a favorite, and we're all interested in seeing how they're going to do without the big mile. I mean, Keyshawn Johnson. Can they come away with a win on Monday night? We'll find out at 9 Eastern. Now it's third down and 10. Coming up. Right from that gun again. The slap incomplete intended for Jones. Terrific coverage that time by Chad Johnson, the freshman from Shreveport, Louisiana. Watch out, Texas Tech will time out their blitz. They will go off to the hand fake of Jason White and then blitz once he reaches between his legs. They'll hold, they'll hold, they'll hold, but Oklahoma's using a silent count and they wait for the signal and then they blitz. The wind a big factor. They're not even gonna try a field goal. On fourth down and 10, they'll line up in the gun against this West Texas breeze and Jason White will go hunting for the first down. Receivers are covered. Under pressure, fires in zone, got it! Touchdown, Travis Wilson! A 28-yard scoring strike as Jason White, given time early and under pressure late, on fourth and 10, fires the scoring strike, and that's why OU is number one. When you're playing man-to-man -man coverage, you got to cover this long, and it's fourth down. Remember, the quarterback's going to throw the ball. You might as well throw it up for grabs. No big deal if you get it intercepted. You throw it up to your receiver, and we've seen it in college football all year. The receivers are better with the ball in the air than the defenders. Remember, that was against the wind now, ladies and gentlemen. There's Trey DiCarlo. Tax on the extra point. Tommy Harris and the rest of those defenders ready to come out, and you can take one more look at it. Now, Jason White, you see how the front is clean. Now, just at the late, almost there, fires. Six points, OU. Here's out front. If you're a student here, you can call it the Oreo. So, Bob Stoops. May lose his brother, Mike Stoops. He's one of the leading candidates to become the head coach at Arizona. I know Jack Arute has talked to both of the Stoops. We'll cover that story as the day unfolds. Of course, that's one of the things that happens, Gary, when you're really successful, your assistant coaches start getting head coaching jobs. Yeah, that's not a bad deal. No, it's not at all. Against the wind, this one is fielded at the 20-yard line by Johnny Mack. All of it by the five, four. Well, let's take a closer look at Simmons. He really is a unique player. I tell you, first down, he gets one year to play, and the reason he's good is because he was on the bench and holding the clipboard. He did some learning and studying. He was ready to go. He always had a strong arm. He was recruited by Oklahoma. They lost him to Texas Tech, and when he's back there throwing, he's got that quick release, and he throws it to a lot of different guys. <laughs> it's like a video game. <laughs> Pac-Man fire one after another. Here he comes now. Trailing for the first time today, 7-3. He's 6'1", 220 pounds. He played high school football over in Houston at Cypress Creek High School. 
the fake of the inside handoff to Henderson, and Henderson scampers to the 43-yard line, and so far, it is the running game that has caused OU a little problem. Derek Strait forced to make that stop. You know, Leach tells such an interesting story about Simmons. Said, when I was on Stoops' staff, I tried to get Simmons to come up to Oklahoma. Then I got the head coaching job at Texas Tech, and I had to call him and say, you don't want to go there. You want to come play for me in Lubbock. Called him his best backup <laughs> quarterback he's ever had in his coaching career, and I think he's been right, proven right this year. First down for Simmons and the Red Raiders. Front is kept clean, intercepted on the ricochet at midfield. Rodney Poole, number 23, has got one at midfield on the first turnover by the Red Raiders, and Leach not pleased with that throw. Yeah, it was an unforced error, too. You're going to beat Oklahoma. You can't make yourself mistakes and get yourself misbeat. Here you see the throw. No one's even in the line that time. No fate, no hand in his face. Throws the ball too high, and that's when you're playing against Oklahoma's zone. Every guy is looking at the quarterback and tip ball often end up with great athletes making interceptions. The sellout crowd was so alive when Texas Tech moved the football with the initial possession, settled for a field goal. Then the Sooners came back and on fourth down, struck for their first touchdown. Now the linesman's going to stop this before the snap. He and the referee, and a timeout has been called here by the Red Raiders. So we'll take a break. OU leads it 7-3. Top of the hour, and we'll show you the key plays. Third down, the 45-yarder to Clayton by White. Then it was fourth down, and here's the 28-yarder to Wilson for the touchdown. Then the unforced air, Rodney Poole with the pick. And OU's got it back, leading 7-3 here. Just across midfield. Using the H-back look with Runnels. And all the works for four yards, and we go down below to our colleague Jack Aru. Jack. Well, Brent, you were talking about Mike Leach trying to convince B.J. Simmons to go to Oklahoma. Well, Mike Leach, when he was at Oklahoma, also involved in the recruitment of Jason White. In fact, when I talked to Chuck Long before the start of today's game, he said, you know, Jack, <laughs> Mike Leach really wasn't that high on Jason White. <laughs> Bet he is now. <laughs> Yeah, that's not the story that Leach told us yesterday, is it? Kind <laughs> of interesting, yeah. But that was reminded to Jason this week. You need six. Works is cut off. Bounces outside. He's short of that first down. Third down and short is Ryan Hancock, the leading tackler. Comes up with still another stop, but at the end of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. This Texas Tech defense has been improving, but it had a long way to go from their improvement. At one time during the year, they were 117th, dead last in the country in total defense. They've turned it around slightly, but they're very young. They have nine freshmen in their 22 too deep on defense. So here's your third and two. Looking for the yellow line in the first down, and White's going to fire the ball. Got it easy. Donnelly into the red zone, muscling, still going to the five-yard line. Lance Donnelly on that third down play for 36 yards, Gary. Well, Vincent Meeks, who unfortunately was the guy who got beat against Texas, Right here is the guy who has man-to-man -man on the tight end right in front of him. He thinks it's a run. He runs right by him right there. Now he can't even find him. Look at Vincent, a sophomore, got lost in the coverage, and that's one of the fears that Tech had coming into this game. Remember, we put it up in the lineup sprint. Just line up right and do the little things. Acock, the leading tackler, will have to come off for a play. Shake it up. So after receiving medical... Well, it looks like a yes, groin. That is a yeah, groin. that's the groin. No question. Born right here in Lubbock. Six uncles played college football. How about that? Yeah, and his brother's on the team. Yep. What a, what a, what a football family. Watch out. I back out of here. Now, Acock had a grip, and you can see as yep. he falls away, he let something go. was happening. He let go, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, well, that's bad They news. could ill afford to lose yep. him. They've got the converted running back back there at the safety, and uh, 
Got a little lost at the end of that Texas game and here early. And so a real problem for the Red Raiders back there on defense as Jones carries to the two yard line. You know, when you watch the Red Raiders, and there was a penalty. Yeah, I think it's going to be an unnecessary roughness against Oklahoma, it looked like. Maybe That's both. the average time of one of their games <laughs> because they throw the ball and there's so many incompletion. Three hours and uh, 37 minutes. So, uh, Dead ball, first we have, foul against the offense. 15 yards, second down. I think it was Brandon Jones. Was it? Yes, Brandon Jones was the one. It was way away from the play. Throws him down, stands there, and then the shove late. That's the one. Referees would have let him go without that last shove right there. And the official sent a word through Jack that that's exactly what happened. And, uh, so a change of personnel. Second down and goal from the 18, maybe 17 yard line is the official well number as, uh, on this. As you see our sellout crowd here in Lubbock, Texas on a breezy day. The wind blowing directly into the, the Sooners' faces here. They've already scored once going into the win. From the gun, side on, Donnelly again, and not this time. So he is stopped by Josh Rangale, number 33. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Terry and Craig will have highlights and analysis from Rivalry Saturday, including the big game, Ohio State losing to Michigan. The best news that USC and LSU could receive today, the Wolverines with a win over a Buckeye team that had climbed to a very controversial number two, not because of strength of schedule, but because of the computers. There's a big difference. There are two separate categories in the BCS rankings, and it is the computers that boosted the Buckeyes for five days to number two. Pump fake white, going for the corner of the end zone. Got it again over there. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And this time, it is Mark Clayton and Jabari Smith torched again in that corner. Man, what an attack. And Jabari Smith, the true freshman, playing against Mark Clayton, one of the top four or five receivers in all the country. And when you got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and what Oklahoma says, Chuck Long and Bob Stoop says, is the best deep thrower they've ever seen in Jason White, you can see why they can put up points like they do. This is not the kind of start that the Red Raiders wanted. Oklahoma into the win. Coming up with two touchdown passes from Jason White. Folks, you're looking at the Heisman Trophy leader. On the money again. A beautiful throw. I'm out. That's the Texas Tech. Connection accounts for over 30% of the passes that Jason White throws, fellas. Why? Because in 2000, they were both on the scout team. They were so bored, what they decided to do was try to burn the number one defense whenever they could. And when they did, they busted up laughing. That's a pretty good team they were going to get the scout team against the national champs in 2000, huh? Indeed. <laughs> well, the Red Raiders. Looking to get some field position. To Carlo, the ball on the tee at the 35. Fielded at the 25 by Johnny Mack. To the 39 yard line. So, you know, Mike Leach, we talked to him about why this offense works, and here's what he had to say. Football, there's a wealth of ideas, and the key to football is uh, to package the ones that suit you the best. And I think, uh, you know, the biggest point of emphasis needs to be on distribution. You know, can you get the ball to all your skilled players? And so far, they have not been able to do that here. No, and, and I don't think it's anything Oklahoma's been doing so far. They got to just kind of gear up and make their own plays. Get there's a good way to play right there, Mickey Peters from Weatherford, Texas, receiver Donna Nicholson, the defender. Well, he talked about pass distribution. When you look back over the season, Gary, that, that's remarkable. It, re it really is. You know, they've got the leading re tight end receiver in the country in Mickey Peters who just got that little screen. And then you got two receivers outside in Welker and Francis that are going to break records in yardage. And you got a quarterback that's setting a record. You can't stop them, but their defense just can't stop anybody either. Yeah, and, and they've stopped themselves offensively. And there's a, and can we, Gary, let me ask you about this when you were a quarterback. 
in the wind, does it ever make a ball sail when it's behind you? I think it's much deeper to throw the ball deep with the wind behind you than it is. A, you a say normal it's tougher? Wind. Yeah, oh yes, a normal wind like this. This isn't a you know overly tough wind to throw in, but the short passes, I don't think it's any factor. No, no factor. factor at all. But if he pass. tries to go deep, it could sail. It could sail, and I think that one did ju just that. It did. Second and 10. BJ back in the shotgun. Four receivers out. Looks right, fires right, high, caught out of bounds. This will be third and short at the 45 yard line. And there's Mike Stoops. Fiery coach on that sideline, not happy with that call over there. Mike Stoops uh, 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 down there in Arizona, that's the type of fire he's going to bring if he gets there. Now, do you only need one foot in? Obviously, BJ looks to the middle. You get a zone blitz from the out the field side. He finds the outside receiver late. Did he bring it in? Oh, that's a bad no, call. No, never got his left, his right foot down. Not at all, did he? No, that's a bad call. Oh, I don't blame Mike on that. That was, that was, I mean, that was simple call. The, the really? headlines was, was looking call. right at it. Yeah, and, uh, well, it can happen. Third down and two now. Stoops leads it 14 3. And uh, BJ Simmons brings him on up to the line like of scrimmage. Punch. I would say that Tex Tech probably in four down territory here. They're not going to punt. Is that end around looking Mack coming back very close to the first down. And. Uh, We'll get that measured. Tommy Harris makes the play. And uh, Jack, what is the story with Mike Stoops in Arizona? Well, Mike, all week I talked to Mike Stoops on several occasions, and he has confirmed to me, as he has to the press, that he is one of the finalists for that Arizona job. But he also told me, Jack, I really want the head coach's job. He thinks that he can revive the defense there. He also feels that it would be a good place to try and recruit some assistant coaches. Well, what about Mike Stoops with the Big 12 championship, a bowl game, things like that here at Oklahoma? He said that he would try to come back. At least his brother wants to bring him back. Look for an announcement as early as Tuesday. All right, Jack, we'll keep an eye on that story. The inside shovel pass against the three-man rush. Mack across the 35-yard line to the 33, and uh, this is going to be second down and short. One of the uh, real positives for Oklahoma, though, is Stoops has worked with Brent Venables for the last four years as co-defensive coordinators. I think that's a good strategy by Bob Stoops to have these guys work together designing game plans just in case you lose one of your coaches, you got the other one, it's not as tough a transition. And I would believe that through the Big 12, Mike Stoops will help, uh, if he gets the Arizona job, will certainly be closely in touch with Oklahoma. After that, I'm not so sure. If they get to New Orleans, remember back when Stoops won the national championship in Miami. Mark Rick had already been hired as a Georgia coach, yet he stayed on with Florida State. He called the plays upstairs. A lot of people believe that he was distracted during that game, and we'll have to see how it plays out. So after the holding call, we have second down and 20, and Simmons fires incomplete. Terrific coverage by Strait. You could not get better coverage on a pass play than straight. And I know, Gary, you like me think he's simply one of the best. Oh, in the I'll business. tell you, straight and Antonio Perkins, these two corners here at Oklahoma, they lost Andre Wolfolk, a number one draft point, a pick a year ago. But these two guys, that's a tough challenge for Texas Tech to run those deep routes against Perkins and straight. They're much better with those little crossing and slant routes in the middle of the field. And then when you throw it in the middle of the field, you have to be accurate because tip balls becomes interceptions. Needing 20. After that holding call, Simmons moves up under center, and usually from that formation, they show that end around look, and now Simmons will drop back out of it. Good so discipline by Oklahoma there. Simmons dropped at midfield. Ball should have been caught, but it was dropped by Jared Hicks. Teddy Lehman. The, you know, one of the things about Lehman and the OU linebackers is the fact that they move so well in space that against a passing team, they stay on the field. That's how fast they are. You don't have to substitute and put in a lot of extra defensive backs when you've got number 11 and linebackers with speed like that. No, Ooh, what a luxury. Lehman comes off the field when the game's over. He stays out there the whole time. Exactly. When they do the kneel down. That's right. Yeah, he that's comes it. off. That's it. 
third down. A lot of three-man package and zone blitz routines that Mike has designed for this offense. Cody was actually standing up and the uh, play is whistled dead. That was kind of an interesting defensive look. They stood Cody up and they were looping him back into the middle that time. Brandon Shelby, number five, is actually the sixth defensive back on the field in this three-man package. Please put 211 on the field clock, 211. There you see Shelby. We got Dante Nicholson, number eight. Shelby, number five. Everidge is on the field. Straight's on the field. Perkins on the field. They got DBs all over the place. And maybe the fastest guys, as Brent said, might be Lehman. He might be as fast as all of them. Poole with the interception, number 23. As fast a defense as you'll see across the board. Simmons, protected pocket holds, and it throws. It should have been intercepted. Almost picked off by Perkins at the 38-yard line. Just could not hang on, but Texas Tech is forced to punt, and Alex Reyes out of Allen, Texas, trots onto the field. DJ tried to force that ball downfield against that speed. That's like throwing against an NFL defense. You got guys that eat up a lot of grass when that ball's in the field, and that's why, uh, in the air, excuse me, and that's why Oklahoma can play a great zone defense. Antonio Perkins. We saw him take three back for scores against UCLA. Wow. That's what a West Texas breeze will do for a punter. Coming out again on the 20 yard line. And as the freshman booms it. Completely out of the end zone. He's had a very strong freshman year, I'm told, for Texas Tech. Well, you know, you, you talk about Jason White, and you asked me the question in the open, Brent, about is, you know, these guys just a product of the system? And of course that they are. I mean, of course they are. You're not going to throw up these kind of numbers without being able to throw the ball all game like they do. But I think Jason White would be successful in any system. Reason is he's accurate and he's smart and he throws a great deep ball. He is seven it, of it, nine for 136 yards and two touchdowns already. The Stoops in uh, making the presentation for Jason as a Heisman Trophy winner, he said, you tell everybody, the voters out there, we had the same team last year. The difference, Jason White's maturity at that quarterback position, he's met the difference as Jones, Jones is stopped on that. And uh, when you ask Jason White how he's matured as a quarterback, this is how he responds. Just by getting in the film room and, and studying, the, studying the playbook, I've grown up in this, assist, uh, this system and I've matured in it. So you know, things, things are a lot slower now out there than they used to be. It used to be so fast that I wanted to run. You know, I don't know about him as far as the Heisman Trophy is concerned. I can't speak for other voters, but he's got to be the leader for the comeback of the year. Two major knee surgeries in back-to-back -back years, different knees, and he's out here. A little misread, miscommunication, and it is incomplete. We, of course, uh, were there at Nebraska for the, uh, the first one. The second one was in Norman, unfortunately. And to watch him, Jack, and his mobility during a game, uh, it's remarkable, and you're so pleased for the young man. Indeed you are, Brent. When you ask Jason White how those injuries affected him, he will be very quick to tell you that it changed his style, but it said it made him concentrate more on his strengths and his weaknesses. He said his head is better equipped now for playing the game. His coaches agree. They say maybe it was a blessing in disguise. He's a much better quarterback since the injuries. Yeah, and he's uh, three of five, Jack, on third down, one of one on fourth down. Sacked at the 10-yard line. Rolling through was Duckett again. He now has 14 and a half sacks on the season, as that's his second on the day. Right out, you see, uh, they fake the blitz here, come out of it, and then Duckett gets an inside rush that time and beats Wes Sims. And you have speed to the outside, do the quick arm under right there, and then get inside. And that was the only way to stop this Oklahoma offense is rush the passer. Listen to that thief. It's the only way to stop Oklahoma. Ferguson hits it at the goal line. Coming back at him. And with that wind, it just wouldn't go anywhere. Well, you know, Mike Leach is such an interesting character out of Cody, Wyoming. Let's take a closer look. My favorite athlete, Stan Marino. My favorite college coach is Bear Bryant because he set the standard and he withstood the test of time. My favorite food is crab legs. Uh, you got to enjoy the process. It's a little bit like sunflower seeds, but uh, unlike sunflower seeds, the reward is more than worth it. 
<laughs> Look, don't ask me how someone from Cody, Wyoming fell into crab legs. But That's the first it, connection of sunflower <laughs> seeds and crab legs ever. <laughs> first down, Simmons and the Red Raiders with a golden opportunity. They're going to lose this wind at their back here shortly. Uh -oh. Threw it up for grabs, an interception. Picked off by Everett. Every battle back to the 20-yard line. Now, the pressure that time came from Big Dan Cody, and that allowed Brandon Everidge to make the interception. Gary, I didn't think he should have thrown the ball like that. No, this. it was a zone blitz package that Oklahoma used. This should be no surprise. Brandon Everidge never leaves the middle of the field. Two guys come this side. It's misread by BJ. He thinks it's an all-out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage. It's not. Three deep, three underneath. That's that zone defense that Oklahoma has run against good quarterbacks all around the country. We saw Cliff Kingsbury try to handle this. If you don't recognize the zone blitz, you will not beat Oklahoma. Texas Tech has been held to 33 yards passing in the first quarter. They've run for 32. So OU with two interceptions here. They have forced two right, turnovers. Full start offense. Five yards, still first down. Come to think about it, maybe Ohio State was a winner today. They don't have to play these rascals. <laughs> it's not going to be easy for anybody, folks. This is one hellacious football team. Well, the, the competition's going to step up in the next two. Now, Kansas State, they'll be ready for that Big 12 Missouri championship if they get there. Or Missouri, Brad Smith, although they dominated Brad this year, unlike a couple seasons ago, they run into daylight. And Jones. Gets him back into makeable territory before John Saldy brings him down. He came across the 25 yard line. So we run out the final ticks of the clock here in the opening quarter. And now OU gets the wind at their back as if they need it after this message and a word from our ABC station. So the Sooners, working against the wind, still put a couple of sevens up there on the board. And now they come out as we open the second quarter. 140 yards of offense to Texas Tech's 65 in the opening quarter. Gary, as we watch Oklahoma, the question comes to my mind if we hear that USC is up a couple of touchdowns, but what kind of a team could press this Oklahoma team? Well, I know Mike Leach talks about distribution and that being important. I think absolute balance must be important. You must be able to run the ball at this Oklahoma defense and be able to spread it out with three wide receivers. A team like Michigan or USC, I think, would give them a, a, a big problem. Kansas State might with a unique player in L. Roberson, a guy who could do a lot of different things. Gary lobbying for Michigan to move up. <laughs> Third down and two from the gun. Picks up the first down and Clinton drops it. And it's stripped. The Red Raiders have got the ball at midfield on the turnover. Well, good for Vincent Meeks. He kind of got one back. Remember the safety was in the wrong spot on the pass before. This time kind of reaches back on Clayton and gets one back for Texas Tech. And Raingale, I believe, recovered it for the Red Raiders. Just a simple little slant pay. You can see Texas Tech is coming with the blitz. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Meeks is out there and from behind. And that's where most of the fumbles happen. Someone from behind rakes that ball, and Texas Tech stays in football. And they're working with a short field again. Raingale, number 33, came up with the first Red Raider turnover of this game. Simmons has thrown a couple of picks. Yeah, BJ has settled down. I mean, there's nothing new that they're doing here. Sprints to the right. And out of bounds and uh, incomplete. You know, it's, it, it's a treat watching Simmons, and you and I have uh, talked driving out the ballpark that if he should be able to upset the number one team, you'd really have to boost his chances well, I, for the Heisman. I, I think he has to go to New York. I mean, this guy set an all-time passing record, and I think it's good to reward a kid who stayed in the program who doesn't play. We see all these quarterbacks transfer the first time they don't get to start as freshmen. He showed that if you learn and stay, like a Tom Brady, I mean, you still learn and, 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 and stay around, you can do good things. 
Second down and 10 after the incompletion for Simmons. You can see how Oklahoma has to defend the width of the field. And that opens the oh, yeah. again. He's had a couple of big drops here, Gary. Yeah, I, a couple drops by the receivers, a couple high throws, a couple of plays where the offensive line breaks down, a uh, couple misreads. Isn't that the story of a good defense? You know, I mean, you try to do things a little faster than you normally do, and you make mistakes. Brings up a third down just across midfield at the Sooner 49-yard line. Three receivers are off to the right side of this formation on the wide side of the field. B.J. has Henderson off to his left. Needs to get inside the 40 for a first down. Fires for it, dropped again. And that was a first down, and Glover dropped out. That is the third dropped pass of the game, and that is not like Texas Tech. Now, Antonio Perkins will be coming in, and uh, here's what he likes to do when he gets the football. Well, every time I touch the ball, I think I can make something happen. I feel like I'm capable and the team's capable every time we touch and take him to the house. Well, here he is, seeing if he can take this one to the house. Standing back on the 15-yard line. This will be a short punt. UCLA can attest to that, three of them. Reyes trying to punt away from him. and does a good job inside the 15-yard line. That's a beautiful punt by Alex Reyes from Allen, Texas. Timeout. Which quarterback, Gary, is the record breaker of this game? <laughs> well, this guy's got the better defense, and this guy's got a bunch of drop balls. Yeah, three officially. Three, three drop George balls. George has got three officially over here in the stats. Well, BJ's made a couple mistakes, too, though, so he can't get too down on his receivers. You just got to keep chucking it. Here's number 18 now. Could apply for a sixth year, or could be the OU quarterback next year. Stoops would love to have him run this offense one more time. Now they set the screen pass for Porter. He's an excellent receiver, just shy of the 30-yard line. And uh, Jack, what's going on with Coach Leach down there on the Red Raiders sideline? Well, Bernie didn't have a lot to say to me before the game, as you observed, but boy, did he just have a lot to say to his offense. He gathered them around, and he just chewed them out told them that they're not focusing, told them that they just have to go out there and do their job. He said, if you don't want to go out there and execute, we'll get someone that will. You can't blame him with those drops, yeah. Jack. They'd have, they'd have had a good march going here. They'd have had a first down on that third down pass. First down and 10. You don't want to give OU extra chances. Jones is stuffed at the line of scrimmage by the Red Raider D that time. Well, it's time for the Affleck trivia question. Now, the Red Raiders are averaging better than 44 points a game. And uh, when was the last time Oklahoma gave up 40 points in a game? Not ancient history. So uh, some of you sooner loyalists they, up there in the they, uh, Oklahoma been, City area, they don't know the answer to that. They almost haven't given up 40 points in the Big 12 this year. That's amazing, this one this year. And extracting some revenge. Here comes the blitz. Clayton. 31-yard line. That was Rangale who recovered that fumble. Uh, Texas Tech continues to read the hand, the silent count of Jason White. Watch him get the hand right here. And then when the hand goes down, that's when the blitz starts in the bigger box. That's the way to do it. You take advantage of the silent count. You hold, you hold, you hold for the quarterback. Don't let him know what's coming, and you just blitz and get there. But at least you don't, the quarterback doesn't know what you're doing. So the school record, 67 receptions this season for Mark Clayton. White from the gun, gets lots of time. Deep middle. Drop. Jones. Oh they took a crack at the home run ball with the breeze at their back, and they come up empty. I'll tell you, John Saldi that time, Brent, on that deep throw, and it was a perfect deep throw by Jason White, almost put the quarterback out, Jason White, because he came at him like a missile. Forced to punt, and Ferguson, this will be fun, folks, with this breeze at his back. They wait to see what Blake Ferguson can do here. Good 
great coverage on this punt. Welker slipping, sliding, and down at the 15-yard line as James Moses, a tight end, makes a good stop. Remember we talked about Saldi going at him. Here comes a missile in from the left side. And <laughs> just slips by. <laughs> Airborne timeout. Man, last night it was Friday Night Lights, folks. You should have seen all across the flatlands of West Texas, high school football, the playoffs. They lit up the skies down here in Texas. And, uh, man, what great high school football they play down here. There's that Michael screen for the Red Raiders. And Wilker, eight or nine yards on that play before Allen makes a tough stop, number 48. Good looking range for that linebacker right there. Now, Gary mentioned it. So quickly, Dr. Graphics <laughs> gets it ready. Now, look at this. This is what they're averaging. Gary, look wow, at that. Wow, look, look at these. Uh, they haven't given up a touchdown in the last three games right there. And, uh, you know, they have played against. There's a lot of offense in this conference. Maybe not a lot of defense against these guys. Oklahoma, far and away, the, the, the class of this conference. They put up 65 on Texas, didn't they? Yes, they did. Easy, easy. First down with Henderson, the ball carrier that time. And Allen again making a stop. And, uh, the Pacific Life game summary focuses in on this Oklahoma defense. Well, Great you coverage. You better do things right when you're going against this defense because they are fast, they react to the ball, and they have playmakers on defense. We haven't even seen a lot of their defensive line because this style offense throws it so quick, you really don't get to call those guys' names out a lot. Yeah, in fact, he hasn't been sacked yet, and he escaped punishment that time. Giffy knee and all slides for the first down. B.J. Simmons puts a charge in the offense that time. 13 yards, and he must have been a pretty good runner before I, that injury. Yeah, we're seeing about 50%. Here's the blitz that have been used all day. They run the zone blitz. They go three deep behind it. This time they whiff on him. Five guys blitz. They drop to Cody, the defensive end of the flat, and that's why you get all that space up there. And B.J. is doing it maybe 70% with that knee. He's starting to find his fastball, though. Hitting the guys in the numbers. They gotta start catching. Yeah, just a question of hanging on here. There they did. Going down to a knee is Glover. Makes the catch just short of midfield at about the 48-yard line. And uh, Leach has to be a little bit pleased with this drive so far, Jack. Well, Brent, absolutely. And you know when they say that uh, Brian or BJ Simmons is a product of Mike Leach's system, don't tell Bob Stoops that. Because Bob Stoops says, this is a kid that's a true athlete. In fact, he said, hey, guys, if it was a product of the system, all Mike Leach would have to do, go to the local convenience store and go to the Slurpee counter and find the next quarterback for Texas Tech. When do you see Texas Tech in the second quarter with more rushing yards than passing yards? And uh, showing the end of the round, but there is a whistle. Walker was going to that far side. And uh, so alert, uh, alertness uh, by Miss Sundevil down there who noticed that on the statistics with uh, 9.59 to go in the half. That is a, uh, it's amazing. That's definitely the leading candidate for out of whack stat. <laughs> <laughs> we got an early out of whack leader, folks. <laughs> Texas Tech rushes for more yards today than they pass for. I can, you got a scoop. I can safely say they will not win the game if that holds up. <laughs> Trailing at 14-3. They're averaging over, though, over 100 yards rushing this year. When Leach came here, they averaged 66 the first year, 81 the next year, 99 last year, and 109 this year. So they're learning how to run the ball in this system. After the penalty, second and nine. Fake to Welker. Got a man wide open for a first down. And Torian Henderson out of Gatesville, Texas, picks it up. Well, earlier we asked you now, Tech is averaging better than 44 points a game. When was the last time Oklahoma gave up 40 points in a game? Well, you go back to 1998, and it was Oklahoma State. And it was John Blake's last season as a head coach. It was welcome Bob Stoops after the 41-26 tasting by an arch rider. First down across midfield for Simmons and the Red Raiders. Lots of time here in the second quarter. Good blocking, middle. 
complete at the 31-yard line, and it's Mickey Peters. And you know there are four receivers on this team who can wind up with 1,000 yards this year, and Peters is one of them. He came in with 843, Gary. Watch Teddy Lehman get over to the wide side when Peters comes across. They're going to run a guy underneath, but Teddy Lehman reads it, lays out for the ball, and just can't quite get there. That's why you have to have a strong arm. To throw against zones, you have to have a strong arm. Man to man, you don't need a strong arm. You can lay the ball in front of the guys. B.J. Simmons is now nine yards away from Ty Deppner's record. Close it in with Glover. Ty Detmer came out of Texas and went up to BYU. His daddy was a high school football coach down here. They led Brigham Young to some tremendous seasons. And he set the single season record that B.J. Simmons is going to crash here today. 5,188 yards, and Simmons is closing in. He needs only two more. The next reception should do it. B.J. Simmons headed for the record book. Does it up under center, and instead he'll pitch it out here to Henderson. Henderson struggling for that first down line. Got close, but you see the linesman marked it just short. Perkins making the stop for the Sooners. I mean, uh, you know, no one believes this game's over, obviously. Remember that Texas Tech came back on the road versus Texas twice. It was 21-6, they came back and took the lead. Then it was 35-21, and they came back and took the lead. So Texas Tech is used to being behind with this high-powered offense. They know they can drive the ball. Third down and one. Simmons hands to Henderson for the first down into the red zone. Torian Henderson, 5'9", sophomore. Well, the Capital One Halftime Show will be coming up. John, Terry, Craig, they'll get a chance to pick their top two for about the 18th time this season. <laughs> Those rascals yeah. keep changing who we're going to have. It's funny, Oklahoma stays up there with all their picks. First and ten. Glad they're not charting me. <laughs> Back. And Simmons just two yards away. From the all-time single-season passing record sets the screen, and he'll give some back. Henderson thrown for a loss on that play by Allen, number 48, who's been playing impressively here so far today. Yeah, he caught a bad defense that time. I don't know if they have a checkoff ability in Texas Tech's offense, but when you get inside the 20-yard line, Mike Stoops and Oklahoma gets out of that deep zone and starts to blitz you. Very surprised they went to that slow screen to the running back against that defense because that gets eaten up with those linebackers jumping on the number three receiver, Henderson. So Ty Detmer just picked up 11. <laughs> <laughs> and now BJ needs 11 to break the record. Got it. There's the record inside the 15 yard line. BJ Simmons to Nehemiah Glover, the all time single season passing yardage record, unless he gives it back. I'll tell you, the guy can throw the ball. There, there's no doubt. I mean, I know this is a quarterback-friendly offense. Kingsbury did it, but he puts it on the numbers. There is Mrs. Simmons. So pleased yeah. with the performance of her son here, the brothers watching. Another BJ completion. This would be big if he could drive into a touchdown. Trailing the top-ranked team in the country, 14-3. Third down. Fires complete. That's a first down inside the nine-yard line. Derek Strait defending, but he put it into Glover's hands again. One of the little hidden qualities that you teach to a quarterback on a slant pass is to throw the ball to the back shoulder. Watch how this ball is thrown. If you see this guy bite, you throw it to the back shoulder. The receiver and the quarterback read it together. That's where this offense gets to be like the wishbone. You run it over and over and over and over again, and you see every possible look. We get word that USC is up 24-0 on UCLA. 
Simmons rolls to the right. Fires complete and out of bounds at the six yard line. That's Peters. And the singular wireless poll question. What's the best rivalry of the games today? Which one do you like the best? Michigan, Ohio State, Auburn, Alabama, Harvard, Yale, USC, UCLA, California, Stanford. Or you can vote none of the above. I voted for Montana, Montana State. I mean, what the heck they're playing today? <laughs> anyway, log on to ESPN.com, search singular, and make your vote, and we'll have uh, an update on that a little bit later. Second and goal, the Red Raiders trying to make a stand here. Texas Tech was very successful with the draw against uh, Texas. Yes, they were. Henderson ran it in. This time, they'll throw the screen. Touchdown! Russ Walker from Oklahoma City puts up six on the Sooners, a team he worshipped as a youngster. In order for this play to work this smoothly, because Oklahoma's so quick, you must be accurate. And watch how accurate this call goes out on the bubble screen to Welker. Hits him right on the front shoulder. It's like a long handoff. Beautiful blocking downfield by Carlos Francis. Puts it into the end zone. Remember, Tech misfired on a couple of extra points over in Austin. Not this time. Perfect and love it. Welker being congratulated on the sideline. Simmons on the drive. Folks, he was 10 of 10 for 67 yards. He's better into the win. I'm out. Now that that's a face, folks, right there from the southwest of Oklahoma and, and Texas. That, that, Central that's a casting, football huh? face, you bet. <laughs> Another one over here is Simmons. And folks, undefeated at home this season. On this artificial turf. They are tough to deal with with this format. And the Sooners not giving up the first one. Touchdown of the game. And swing free. Yeah. Rankins is thrown down at the 40-yard line. Well, next Saturday, a great lineup of Thanksgiving weekend college football. At 1 Eastern here in the Big 12, Iowa State, Missouri. Some of you will see Georgia, Georgia Tech. Then at night, Jack Aroot will be with Gary Danielson and me in the Miami-Pittsburgh game. He always gets upset if I don't mention him in those games. So that'll be, of course, a BCS spotlight game. We'll see what happens there. Here, the number one team in the nation has been stopped so far in the second quarter. Let's see what they do with this drive. Jason White back out under center. Might have been a little bit easy for the Suns. They were up 14-3. White forced out of the pocket. On the run, fires low. And a diving reception by Clayton at the 41-yard line. When you go back to look at what Mark Clayton has done this year, already 15 TD receptions, 23 for his career, and it's just one spectacular moment after another, including here today. He now has 100 yards here today, five catches for 104 yards, and his 23rd touchdown, 14-10. With five minutes to go, White drops it off to Runnels. They use Runnels once or twice a game coming out of the backfield. Mike Smith makes the play. Let's go down below to Jack. Well, Brent, it's hard to believe that while in high school, Mark Clayton was a quarterback. Yeah, that's how he started playing high school ball. But he was mired so deep on the depth chart that he was knocking around one day, and one of the other quarterbacks challenged him to go long. He ran 50 yards, caught a nice fade pass, he stopped being a wide receiver. I mean, he stopped being a quarterback, started becoming a wide receiver after that day. Second down. is thrown for a three-yard loss. McGinnis up to make the stop. Let's take a look, Gary, at our cheap rushing playbook. Well, this is the play they tried to run Oklahoma, but the next the play you just saw stopped it. Same play. Put the guy in motion, pull the backside guard, everybody reach, and pop right through the defense. Watch it. When Oklahoma blocks it well, big crease. Texas said, uh-uh, not last time. They stuffed it. 14-10, here's the third down for Jason White. OU is three of eight. No safety back there. 
Now they back one off late. A one hopper, and it's fourth down. Yeah, receiver fall down on the play. I think Travis Wilson was supposed to go out and come back in on the play, but he slipped and fell, and that's why the ball looked like it went nowhere. I think it's Travis Wilson right here is supposed to come out and then come back in like that. Let's see if he doesn't fall down. Goes out, and just turned and got kind of jammed on the play. Good defense. That's excellent defense on and the play. Remember, they're doing this without Ryan Acock, who is injured. He's seated on the bench on the far right-hand side, number 28, their best safety. Their leading tackler facing a fourth down. They come after White, fires slant, got the first down, and he went to one of his security blankets. There's number nine, Clayton. Chad Johnson with the coverage, but this is a short-handed defense out there right now. The chains move. One That's of the medical staff is over talking to Acock. Kind of a tough matchup not to throw the ball to. Usually trick play by Oklahoma when they come out quick. On the toss with Works, and he stopped. Well, Saldi's having a great game. John Saldi, number five, has just been unblockable. And uh, Jack, I think you've got more on Acock. Well, they took him into the locker room and tried to wrap that strained groin. They iced it down. They put him back out here, but he's still complaining of a lot of discomfort. So it's still a giant question mark if and when he will return. Mm, that's a tough loss. They need that experience back there, if nothing else, because as Gary is told you a couple of times they misalign frequently second down and 11 trying to get to Jason White they don't and as a result Oklahoma has another touchdown this is Jones Brandon Jones for 27 yards man they miss Acock Gary well the strategy of the defense has been to go after Jason White but if you don't get him and this is what the shotgun gives you if you're a quarterback if they come at you, you set up quickly and throw the quick slant if there's any little bit of a problem. And that time it was Josh Rangel that kind of overran the slant. And all of a sudden, you just trot into the end zone. Well, no you swatted the mosquito away and came down for a pretty easy touchdown. And Jones puts it on. And no question, no question at all about who's number one. Tight end goes out, receiver comes underneath it, easy touchdown. Jones just simply jogs away from him, too much speed. 21-10, timeout. One of the many Texans on the Sooner roster, Brandon Jones from Texarkana, Texas. He's a, a junior, and now we'll see if Simmons and the Red Raiders can answer with Mac and Meeks back deep. And the uh, Breeze blew this one off for DiCarlo. He'll put it back on the tee there at the 35 yard line and we'll be underway with 2.45 remaining here in the first half. And uh, John will show you how, how Michigan knocked Ohio State out of that two spot in the BCS rankings today. This will come out on the 20 yard line for Simmons. DiCarlo, of course, one of the finalists. For the pros uh, award and uh, John what's up now with uh, the LSU team against Mississippi minor league organization for the Chicago Cubs and he's a pre dental student down at LSU very bright very efficient not going to panic in the teeth of that crowd at Ole Miss today and uh, that was unfolding the SEC here Simmons oh, picked off and Poole's got another one 20 15 10 out of bounds the second interception of the day for Brodney Poole, who was lurking back there playing center field, and he makes it his second pick and the third of the day for the Sooners. I think B.J. Simmons thought the tight end was going to go in front of the safety. Instead, he stayed right down the hash. When he throws his ball, I think he thinks he's going to go in front of him, see like a crossing route, and the Poole just beat the tight end to the spot, and that's that miscommunication. High risk, high reward offense here. And if you've got a defense that knows how to react to the ball in the air like Oklahoma, you can make mistakes. Leading 21-10. Poole puts him in excellent scoring position again. From the eye formation to the right flat. Runnels cut off. Battles in the short of the end zone. Well, that was a, a nice redirect by Jason White that time, Brent. He wanted to go in the corner of the end zone, 
and the last second he threw the ball out to the flat. Any team that plays Bob Stoops and this Oklahoma team will have its hands full, whether it's Kansas State or Missouri, whether it's USC or LSU or anybody else in the Sugar Bowl, folks. This team is going to be compared with some of the greats of all time. Thank you. They get through that Nokia Sugar Bowl. We'll be talking about this team versus some of those great USC teams of the past, and Buckeye team coached by Woody Hayes. The Sooners have called a timeout. And you know, down here in Lubbock, they've got such great fans down here. And uh, we thought we would pick out this week's super fan, Terry Fuller, graduated in 77. He bought himself an old bus, not just any bus, folks. That's, that's about a half a mil for that one. <laughs> Hasn't missed a football or a basketball game in a couple of years here. Next stop, he may leave at halftime. He's got to go up to New York because Bob Knight and the Red Raiders are going to the semifinals of the NIT. And, and there's our super fan of the week, Mr. Fuller over there, sitting in the stands and not too pleased right now. And we get word from the Coliseum, USC 30. UCLA too, leaving no doubt. Folks, didn't the computers lose credibility this week? Can you imagine one of those rascals had TCU rank third and another one dropped USC from second behind the Buckeyes after they were so efficient against Arizona? Oh my, what's wrong with the humans voting for the best teams to play? They like these Sooners. Nothing wrong with that, huh? Second down and goal now, 21-10, OU. From the two yard line, Jones the running back. He'll try to power in, and he does just like that. Really interesting when you have to play Oklahoma. You really can't gamble on offense because they'll eat up a lot of grass with the ball in the air and get you turnovers. But you can't sit back because Oklahoma's offense is scoring points every time they get the ball. You're really in a pickle when you play these guys. Miles over there on the sideline. This team is so good they couldn't take a knee against Texas A&M even when they tried. The defense was was given an extra touchdown there. And DeKylo tacks it up. It's got to be fun to be a Sooner fan right now. Same play we drew up this time for a touchdown. Sooner, Sooner indeed. It's 28-10 timeout. A holiday tradition with a new twist. Annika Sorenstam becomes the first woman ever to compete in the Skins game. Next weekend, she'll tee it up with Phil Mickelson, Fred Couples, and Mark O'Meara. Coverage begins Saturday at 4.30 Eastern and concludes Sunday at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific on ABC. My golf expert is Gary Danielson. How will Annika do in the Skins game? What tees is she playing from? <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair now. <laughs> yes. 552 points for the Sooners this season. A school record. And they're not finished. No, they're not finished. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Uh, what, a, what a wonderfully put together team. What a confident team. Uh, coaching staff that just goes out and uh, kind of gets their team ready to play. Very intense, disciplined. They got it all right now. They really do. Yeah, we can't overemphasize the, the talent of this coaching staff. So this is the pick which led to the touchdown. There have been three Red Raider turnovers. Poole with two interceptions leading the way. Just past the top of the hour, we're in Lubbock, Texas. Nice afternoon, just a gentle West Texas breeze for about 25 miles an hour. Hasn't impacted the number one team of the nation at all. They lead it. 28-10. Simmons wants the middle again. And got another one picked off on a ricochet. Gavin Allen, the middle linebacker, he went back to the same well and came up empty. Sure it was did. almost an identical play. Sure did. Teddy Lehman, though, you remember when he came across the field last time and just didn't get there? 
diving. This time, he gets there. And you can see a little bit of hard-headedness from B.J. Simmons and Mike Leach saying, if you run the play right, it will work. But it's Teddy Lehman, number 11. It's just off screen right over here. And it's going to get his hand on it. Reads the quarterback's eyes. There's the tight end coming across. Now watch number 11 come and get it. Out of the screen, out of the screen. Look at that speed. Wasn't even in the TV screen. Comes across, doesn't catch it. But the middle linebacker. The third middle linebacker, Allen, that Oklahoma's played gets the. Oh, what a set of hands for a linebacker. Looked like a shortstop, and White goes for it all. Incomplete. Good coverage. Second down, it went to the end zone. Vincent Meeks, the um, sophomore free safety, came as a running back. He's out of Rockwell, Texas. Back with the coverage, and it's second down and 10. And the uh, Oklahoma, like a lot of well coached, good football teams, after the turnover, they go for that deep strike right away. Mike Leach's team is under fire here, trailing 28 to 10. A minute 20 left. Yeah. Jason White, three touchdowns so far in this game. Just drops this one off to Woods. Takes the nice. sideline, and he is to the 11-yard line. Mike Smith makes a stop for the Red Raiders and this defense is under pressure again because of these turnovers. Four turnovers by the Tech offense here in the first half. They probably haven't gotten over that tough, tough loss in Austin and then they looked up and guess who's in town. Right. Can you imagine the two? No one in the country has played two tougher teams the last two games in Texas Tech. They end up with Texas and Oklahoma their last two games. Toughest finishing schedule in college football. Chuck Long's on fire calling plays right now. When he sees the zone, he gets the screen. Man to man, he's throwing slants. He's got him going. Conley in motion. Gives him a fourth receiver in the package. Looks for Jones. Going to throw the fade deep left corner. Incomplete. That was that same slant and uh, corner route that Mark Clayton ran for a touchdown early. This time, Chad Johnson was a little further off and didn't bite. I'm sorry, it was Jabari Smith, wasn't it? Number yes, 34. It this time, Jabari does not bite, and uh, an incomplete pass. Only second down, though. Exactly. <laughs> lots of time <laughs> and lots of weapons. Bradley, number one, he's off to the right. Yeah, Jones has caught seven passes here. In the, uh, I should say, uh, Clayton has caught the six for 112. I was actually looking at, at uh, Kiwan Jones as a running back. He carries seven times for 18 yards. So we've got a little timeout here while they. Well, you've talked about Lehman. So let's take a closer look at the OU linebacker. Hi, I'm Teddy Lehman, University of Oklahoma linebacker. My favorite athlete's John Elway because of his fourth quarter comebacks. My favorite movie is The Big Lebowski because it's the funniest movie I've ever seen. My favorite food is spaghetti because my mom always made it. And I just grew up loving it. Yeah, Mama's spaghetti, but you gotta like anybody that likes the Big Lebowski. <laughs> That's right. If you can't laugh at that movie. <laughs> I tell you, he's my defensive player of the year, though, Teddy Lehman. I think he's deserved it. His three years of playing, he's been an all actually a dominating player for three years on this football team. And wouldn't it be something if Oklahoma, and maybe deservedly so with their dominance, gets the Heisman Trophy winner and the defensive player of the year? Gary, did you see how many of their folks I, are up I, for? I, Joe Castellone, their <laughs> outstanding athletic director, was up here and he said, we got a problem, we don't know which of the parties to go to. Yeah, you with, it, uh, don't you have know, that much money to fill out all that literature. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, they've just done a terrific job and uh, the youngsters have handled it very, very well up there at Norman. They, they can be awfully proud of the program that Bob Stoops has put together. I know the NFL is going to come knocking because they always do, but Bobby, stay right there, my friend. You got something special going up there at Norman, let me tell you. Second down, White. Fires in zone high, caught incomplete. Clayton was on the back of the end zone. The back judge was right there. Huffman with coverage. That was close. Really close. was. Real close. It, you know, Clayton that time did a nice job of actually holding down Huffman's arm and then still watching the ball. Here's Clayton right there. Now watch it. Huffman's got his back to the throw, so only Clayton could see it. With one arm, he holds it off, and then his left foot came down on the white. There's no doubt. Good call by the back judge. He was right there, head position. Talking about the NFL, one of Stoops' closest friends is Steve Spurrier. He hired Stoops as the defensive coordinator at Florida. They talk on the phone frequently. 
White firing high. Volleyball. I don't believe it is pulled down. Oh my. That's a first down for Oklahoma. Donnelly. There's Donnelly. Big Donnelly got it on the ricochet. When you're going good, folks, you're going good. <laughs> my, my. Slant pass to the outside. Brandon Jones is going to go right off his face mask, I think, is it? Yes, right off the face mask. Donnelly said, well, I'm the tallest guy here. Why don't I just grab it? That little rebound. <laughs> Coach Sampson liked that for the hoops team. Good power forward move there. Here's the first end goal. Final 30 seconds. Jones again lined up in that power spot. Going to fake it and throw. Why they'll fire it out of the end zone and buy some time. 22 seconds left on the clock. White's judgment is superb. We've watched him all season long. Uh, he is, Bob Stoops has pointed out, the difference with our football team this year is having a healthy Jason White at quarterback. This is the same football team we had last year except for this position. So those who say that White is being carried by the team don't know what they're talking about. Jason White means a lot to Oklahoma, and Heisman Trophy voters should consider that when they're putting down the names of the three fellows on the ballot. Here's Jones, got it again. Touchdown, Oklahoma. No doubt Oklahoma could run the ball there. They had two timeouts, so even if they didn't make it, they could call a timeout and retool it. This team, the addition that Bob Stoops said they needed to be good year after year was to improve their running game. He hired Kevin Wilson as his running coordinator. You can see the improvement on the offensive line, and now they can hold the lead in the second half. They are a complete football team. The Carlos on the field. Of course, they won that one BCS championship, beating Florida State 13-2. They were an underdog that night down in Miami. And keeping that Noel team out of the end zone was no small task. This is some organization rolling out of North. Time out. Where are we? Well, out in West Texas, Texas Tech University was founded in 1923. A little bit surprised, fellas, about how few you know, make up the undergraduate population. But how about the fact that it's the only Texas institution of higher learning with a university, a law school, and a medical school on the very same campus. That, my friends, is your campus-wide tale of the tape today. And you know, Gary, uh, Jack Aroot likes this town so much that uh, he was looking for real estate the other day when he showed up with well, we you, We saw right? about everything, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jack, I'm gonna get you a map before we go to Kansas City, okay? <laughs> I'll just get a GPS, it's a little easier, all right, fellas? Or, or Lewis and Clark there, we kinda saw the whole deal here. Four well. interceptions, huh? I think uh, Texas Tech got a little greedy against his defense. And when you get greedy, you pay the price against his own defense. Throwing the ball down the middle. Receiver seen it, and this one was just hard. That was old Texas hard hit right there. BJ said, I want to go one more time at it. And there's Henderson stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Oh, so it'll be second down of the uh, final eight seconds. Tick away. Here in the first half, a discouraging first half for the Red Raiders. Meanwhile, the Sooners put a 35 on the board. And uh, Mike Leach, uh, very disappointed the performance of his team here. And let's check in with Jack down below. Well, Coach, you had turnovers that resulted in scores. You had good, strong defense. What are you going to tweak in the second half? Well, we gave up a long drive. We feel we're a little better than that, although they did a nice job executing against it. Uh, still offensively, too. We can run the ball a little better, and, uh, you know, we, we, we got to keep it up. You know, this is a team that we've seen score, you know, in the second half against a lot of people, so we're not – we're going to keep playing hard. Thanks, Coach. And, guys, you can see the wind has kicked up again. Yeah, coaches are never happy, are they? Well, let's send you to New York now for halftime. Here's John, Terry, and Craig. Take it away, John. All right, guys, thanks a lot. The big story of the week in the BC. All of my love, all of my kissing. You don't know what you've been missing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. When you're with me, oh, boy. Oh, boy. The whole world can see that you oh, are what I meant for me. My life, I've been waiting. Tonight, there'll be no. 
Lubbock, Texas, home of Buddy Holly. And today it's the Oklahoma Sooners leading 35-10. The Pacific Life team a summary first half stats. Take a look at the passing yardage here. Jason White is out passing the record setter, B.J. Simmons, 271 to 100. And of course, turnovers also, four turnovers by Texas Tech in that first half. Yeah, the good news, uh, B.J. broke a record. The bad news is he has to throw against his defense for another half. <laughs> DeCarlo with the ball on the tee. And Texas Tech will come up with Meeks and Mack. Back beat. Well, uh, Gary, what's uh, what's out of whack from the first half? Well, when you're playing a good football team, BJ, you see coming into this game plus 31 T days to interceptions. In this game, he's minus three. You're not going to be able to do it like that. But you go back to the point you need a, a balanced attack, that, that run pass to play I, with Oklahoma. I, yeah, this year. I think it's too hard on any college quarterback to throw against these great athletes. And BJ made a critical mistake in this game. Three of his interceptions were on the first play of a drive. I mean, it wasn't even on third down. You really got to be patient against this defense. If you don't have a running attack, how can you be patient? Well, here's Simmons handing it off to start the, the second half with Henderson. But B.J. Simmons out of Houston Cypress Creek High School did record the new single season passing record as he eclipsed Ty Detmer with that pass to Nehemiah Glover. Coming back with the touchdown to Wes Welker. And it made it 14-10, and that was the high point of the first half as far as the Red Raiders were concerned. Second and seven, snaps it off, and he's got the first down at the 32-yard line. Derrick straight with coverage, but Simmons zipped it in there. And uh, Jack, what about the coaches at the intermission? Well, Brent, what you're seeing is exactly what Mike Leach preached to his team. He wants them to make what he calls routine plays. He said, fellas, you know our system. You know how it works. Don't make mental mistakes. Stay focused and keep it routine. That's what he wants to see in the second half. Well, Poole with two of the four interceptions, Jack, is back and average in the single safety situation. The corners off the wide receivers. They tighten up on the throw. And on that pass, he was able to hit Mickey Peters for a first down. Everage coming over from the safety spot with the coverage. One of the unique things of a Mike Leach offense is the tight end, or Mickey Peters, always aligns to the right. Every time the tight end goes right, He's a, really a glorified slot receiver. Uh, he's the leading receiver in the country, but number 86 will always go to the right. Might be in the slot, but he always lines up. Mike Leach started his Big 12 career as an assistant, the offensive coordinator up at Oklahoma when Bob Stoops took over that program. The end around handoff on the running play is Welker. Tackle by Shelby. But we take a look at the comparison of Stoops, who's Played at Iowa and leeches out of BYU. And you can see that Bob Stoops is headed for a possible second national championship. He has already won three of four bowl games, including last year, a big Rose Bowl triumph over Washington State. Leach and the Red Raiders have five for a bowl game this year, so they will be one of the big 12 teams moving on. Kevin Weiberg, the commissioner, and uh, I were discussing teams like, well, Kansas can still get to a bowl game if they win. Here it's Henderson squirting free on the left side. He came across the 35-yard line before Poole made the stop, and there uh, they have rediscovered Henderson. Yeah, I, I think it, you know, I mean, a little bit of experience from B.J. Simmons. Uh, tried to get too much too quick. Maybe uh, Mike Leach did the same thing, but this Texas Tech team kind of got out of sync. Remember the nice drive they had for the touchdown? Little quick screen, little draw, little slip screen, wide receiver screen, jailbreak screen. If you attack Oklahoma downfield, you're going to make mistakes. Simmons backing off of the gun. This is the opening drive of the second half here in Lubbock. Coming back with Henderson again. Down at the 31-yard line, big Tommy Harris. Look at how unique this, uh, there's the tight end right there. Look at the splits up here for Texas Tech. About a yard and a half, and here's the shotgun look. 
tight end over here for Oklahoma. Look at the space eaten up, and that's those natural running holes that Harrison can use when he, excuse me, Henderson can use when he's running those draw plays. The most unique alignment in college football is Texas Tech with these wide splits. Used it at Kentucky with Hal Mum. Second. Michael screen to Welker. Out of the first down, all out of bounds on the far side. Nice little grab by Welker that time. I think he snapped that thing one-handed. Welker is a guy who will play in the NFL. There's no doubt about it. Now, Welker has already broken the career punt return record. He's had at least one catch in 48 straight games, tied for the tops in the nation. Welker today with four catches for 26 yards. He's rushed twice for 10 yards on that end around. So he's an all-purpose guy. Third down, they need five to move the chain. Got it. Inside the 15-yard line, a first down, the receiver, Johnny Mack, the defender, Everage. That's that field blitz again that Oklahoma comes from the wide side of the field. The blitz will come one way, and in this way, Dan Cody, the defensive end, will drop as the sixth man in coverage. He drops. When you're throwing slants against defensive ends, you're pretty confident that you can zip that ball in there very successfully. This is the type of patient drive that really kind of got out of, and that's really the out of whack stat was this. They got out of whack by being too greedy. First down, Raiders. And around, Welker, short of the 10-yard line. McGruder with the stop, and we check in with Jack. Well, Brett, what makes it so interesting how great Welker has become, consider the fact that Wes was the last player to be offered a Texas Tech scholarship in the class of 2000. He said, every day I remember that fact. When I got that last scholarship, I knew I wasn't their first choice, but I was going to make sure by the end of my career that they knew I was their first and best choice. Now, again, Stoops wanted him at Oklahoma. He's out of Oklahoma City, but he did not have a scholarship at the time. And Coach Leach opened up that final scholarship here. The flat's open, but Henderson can't get anywhere. What a sharp tackle over there by Dante Nicholson. The junior college transfer started at safety, and they basically have moved him to a permanent nickel position. He's a linebacker type, a fierce tackler, and he can also drop back into coverage. But he has uh, added to the depth of that defense this year, one of the senior starters. And the speed. That's one of your linebackers right there. They go 4-2-5 against everyone. Amazing. Third down. Oklahoma just stays in that zone. Let's see if they do it again. Nope, they're coming after him this time. Got the slant and two behind it. They want the flag. Get it. They're not going to get it. Carlos Francis out of Fort Worth is down. Antonio Perkins with the coverage and trailing by this score. Leach is probably going to go for it on fourth down. Antonio Perkins beat the slant to the middle of the field. That's why the ball was thrown kind of on the back shoulder again. Watch Perkins beat him. Beats him to the spot. Ball's to the back side, and uh, I guess it's a good no call. I don't know, 35-10 might have been able to throw the flag on that. Uh, they can drag here for a first down just inside the five-yard line. They don't need the, the whole ball to wax here. Simmons is going to call timeout. So we'll take a break. And the door says, "Come on, let's get some more points in there, lads." Trailing by 25. Going to get this down to a workable number here. So here's fourth down for the Red Raiders. Simmons has time. Can't find anybody open. Shakes free, fires, deflected, intercepted. The fifth turnover, this is Derek Strait bringing it out, and Strait's alive. Look out, boys. This is plus 100 if he gets it to the house. He can be caught from behind, no. Got a block, oh, short of the end zone. Derek Strait in a foot race after the pick. Remember, Derek Strait had that hamstring and missed a couple of games. It looked like he could really never open up after he got it. It was a tremendous run 
fourth down play, B.J. has to throw the ball, right? I mean, you got to throw it. You can't get sacked. So you just throw it up for grabs. Dan Cody puts the pressure on right there. Ball is tipped up front or oh, dropped up front by Teddy Lehman again. <laughs> and then Derek Strait kind of runs out of gas here. And when you run out of gas, those old injuries start to come back. And Watch. I give a lot of credit to Texas Tech for not giving up. Look on at this Lehman play. peel back on Henderson, opened it up, yep. and then Mickey Peters got him out of bounds at the three yard line. Couple of things from that play as Jones is short of the end zone. Number one, Tommy Harris took a shot at Simmons got him, as dude. he let go of the ball. I mean, he got a shot. Lehman got Henderson on a terrific block. But Simmons felt the brunt of number 97 as he released it. And it turned out the fifth turnover of the game. Yeah, and, and not only that, Simmons got it twice, Brent. He got it when he let it go. And then after the interception on the return, somebody got him again. Got knocked down twice on it. Well, look at BJ laughing. <laughs> yeah, well, fourth down, I had to let it go. What are you going to do? Is that power eye look that Oklahoma favors inside the five? Jones trying to get his third touchdown of the day. Nope. No signal, so he's down a little short. Raingale again was in on that stop. He's been pretty active defensively. Teddy Lehman got his hands on that ball again, though. Didn't he? the amazing linebacker, Teddy, on that thing? I mean, he's all over the field. Best range we've ever Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. For a college linebacker. That's that Mama's Spaghetti, isn't that what That's he said right. in the first half he liked? Got word from the truck that, that, that and by their counts, the fifth time in this game that a linebacker's got his hand on the ball. There's T Teddy somewhere there. There he is. Sideburns, you can always recognize him. There's the third touchdown for Jones. Kewan Jones takes it in. 826 left in the third quarter. And the number one team in the nation putting on still another show. Mike takes a deep breath on the sideline because his former boss has got him. You know, we don't give Cale Gundy a lot of credit over there. I just happened to see that yeah, shot of him on the side. Let me tell you something. Cale Gundy is an outstanding coach and recruiter for the Sooners. We tend to overlook him, and he does some terrific work down on the field for Soups. It's a staff that's just one good assistant after another on this coaching staff. Touchdown number three. The counter step. Taking it to the end zone. 42 to 10. We bet. Running back coach, played quarterback, obviously. Running back coach, Chuck Long, the quarterback coach, and the offensive coordinator. Nice staff. Five interceptions thrown today. And what's impressive is how OU is all over the football, Gary. Deflecting it, picking it, diving for it every which way. They've made interception after interception here today. When you talk to the quarterbacks, like a Joey Harrington or a young quarterback going into the NFL, the first thing he says is, man, when those NFL guys play zone defense, there's no grass to throw to, and that's what you're looking at out here. Another record for OU, now 397 return yards for straight on interceptions. George tells me that that one was 97. That last one was 97 to give him the record. Try to snap, offside, defense, five yards, first down. With an impressive performance like this, now, I'm not going to try to jinx OU, but it seems to us now that win or lose in the Big 12 championship game, the Sooners are headed for New Orleans. Would you agree with that, Gary? Well, not under the formula I tried to sell last year, <laughs> last week, but I would agree they're one of the best two teams. <laughs> tried to sell the formula that if you don't win the, the league championship, you can't go. But I might be changing my mind here. <laughs> Set me up badly. Oh, I really did. I had you. I know. Simmons fires for the first down. 35 40. And out to the 45 yard line goes Jared Hicks. Everage makes the stop. Well, big Thanksgiving weekend, huh? I would think the Fiesta Bowl, if they lose Oklahoma, would say as a number one choice, let's bring the horns in here with Vincent Young and all those weapons at wide risk, all those fans from Texas. What a great stop that would be from Tempe. But. 
Texas A&M could make its entire season with one of the biggest upsets of the year. That is a huge rivalry game. Now, Nebraska, Colorado. Folks, write it down. Frank Solich needs to go to Boulder and win that football game. There's going to be trouble in River City. Colorado really beat him up up there a couple years ago and started their demise. And they're going to be howling if the Cornhuskers don't rebound. And that's an opportunity in Colorado. This is not one of Terry Barnett's better teams up there at Colorado. So that's another good game on Friday. So there's some great storylines on Friday. Yeah, transition year for Colorado, no doubt about that. Had to rebuild that offensive line. There's that end around look and kept this time. And Matt Brooks Parade ridden down by number 20. And Antonio Perkins, I should say, number 28, came from behind and uh, made the stop. Well, one thing you don't really care about at running back is how tall the running back is. I mean, the NFL is uh, filled with guys that are under 5'9", five, 5'8". Five, Johnny Mack, though, is 5'6". Uh, Mike Leach told us he's got spindly legs, but he can actually dead squat the whole rack. And this guy's strong. He pass blocks, as you can see, he's got good speed. 27 yards. Nope. Coming up under center, Gary. Oklahoma they... has no intensity in the defensive backfield right now. They're just looking at the clock, so let's get out of here. Complete inside the five-yard line, Cody Fuller. His first positive play of the game, Perkins. And it's 23 yards, and it's first and goal for the Red Raiders. Well, you got nothing else to do if you're Texas Tech to throw the ball. That's your whole offense. And... Uh, you can see why they give teams not to this level of tough football game because if you can't put pressure on the quarterback, and look, Oklahoma can't do it consistently, you're going to have to cover these little quick receivers all over the field, and you got a quarterback that can deliver the ball. Johnny Mack, lightning quick, the running back, and not Henderson, lined up behind B.J. Simmons. Here's Mack's blitz. That was a big turn last time. Touchdown, Red Raiders. What do you think about that, Gary? You never liked chasing. No, it's chasing. The guy's three miles ahead of you. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a way you could go for three, I'd go for three right now, too. <laughs> That's a great line of Antoine Walker. He's now playing with the Dallas Mavericks. I said to one, how can you shoot so many of those funky threes? He said, because there ain't no fours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here we go, the two-point conversion. You've got to like Red Raiders' chances here. Yep. They, uh, they have that because uh, they're so well, well spread out. You've got the running attack, and the, the seam's almost there when you run the ball. If you had the running quarterback, if B.J. didn't have that bad knee, you could also run the quarterback draw, but he doesn't have it. Puts the three wide over there. You can see at the top of your screen. Max slips out. Looking middle, though. There's the two. He put it in the hand of Jared Hicks. It's 42-18. So P.J. Simmons and Texas Tech with a nice 80-yard drive. Took a minute 40 and finished off by running back Johnny Mack that time. The Red Raiders not quitting without a bit of a battle here in Lubbock. Why not? It's West Texas. Well, a quick look at that Pontiac high-performance drive summary, and Gary, that's a good drive, 80 yards for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Johnny Mack had the big play, that long run on the play. That's kind of, and I don't think Oklahoma was even into the football game. Look, at they're not even lining up right on the kickoff right now. Texas Tech lined up in a potential onside kick, and Oklahoma calls timeout. My mistake. That was a good play by Oklahoma. So they'll rehuddle and. Uh, what do you think tonight of uh, Kansas State and Missouri up there in Manhattan? I don't think there's any quarterback that's potter right now than L. Roberson. I know he has those off games, but when he gets running the ball and throwing the ball like he is with James Terry, I like Kansas State. Let's take a look at the scoring machine behind Jason White. Travis Wilson on fourth down. Put them ahead for the first time. Mark Clayton, 14 yards. Then Brandon Jones going 27 yards. And then number 20 took over. Kiwan Jones has scored their last three touchdowns. Two yards, two yards, 
and one yard out. And Jason White is putting up Heisman Trophy like numbers, not just today, but all season long. Well, I, don't, you know, I personally, I, well, I don't know, should I do this? I, got, I have a vote. And it's hard for me not to vote for Jason White. He's I had agree. a wonderful year. I mean, coming back from those two knee injuries and uh, getting himself prepared to play like he has. He's got an undefeated team. Anybody that has ever played sports know how hard it is to go undefeated no matter how good a team As the Kansas City Chiefs found out last week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me of that terrible debacle in Cincinnati, Mr. Davis. We had such good field position in the first half. We couldn't do a thing on the 25 yard line now. Well, uh, Jack, what about Coach Stoops over there, lad? Well, Brett, last night when we met with Coach Stoops, he was remarking about how excited he was for he and his team to have Thanksgiving off. Yes, that's right. They're not. They're going to have a bye week next week. And remember, he said, fellas, how important it was to stay focused right to the end and then be able to heal some of the nicks because he knows that whoever they face in that Big 12 championship, well, that's going to be the final roadblock before they can go to New Orleans and get some beads. Yeah, and uh, regardless, Jack, who wins? They don't have enough guys on the field. This is just, Oklahoma's lost focus. They really have. I don't blame them, really, but they've lost focus in the game. Yeah, it's hard to play with 10. Yep. This is uh, Coach Wilson A little loud there. on the program. Um, I mean, you know, Coach Stoops is not, not happy with what's happening here. No, I mean, you're up 42 to 10, and you say we can't lose. Let's get ready for, well, it was 42-10, oh, and okay. they lost focus, and... Then they got that eight pointer. <laughs> <laughs> Good coverage there, quarterback. Tomorrow. The they go. play it from. <laughs> First down in 10, and they'll try it with 11 fellas now. Jason White says, Good. Good for you, Texas Tech. I get to stay in a football game and throw. Well, maybe that's a run formation there for the, for the Stoops group. That one is. Yeah, toss play, and here comes Jones. He doesn't want those nasty New York writers accusing him of running up the score on his own buddy. But I cannot believe that anyone, anyone, would ever accuse somebody of running the score up on Texas A&M. <laughs> Didn't play Jason that entire second half. Defense scores the last touchdown. Yeah, they put 77 up on the board. But at least Coach Francione had enough class to say, hey, he didn't try to run it up. That's just what happened. And you know what you do in this game? It's up to you to tackle and stop the other guy. Put it in the end zone yourself. Come on. Second down. Here's Jason. Yeah, there you are to Clayton. Man, he's a good-looking receiver. Beautiful. Yep. Well, you know, we talk a lot about the number of Texans that are on the OU roster. The numbers are so impressive. 46 from the state of Texas out of the 103. They're from 12 states. 11 starters are out of Texas. And down here, 21 of 24 starters in Lubbock for Texas Tech. And, of course, the one Welker is from Oklahoma. The two from Belgium are probably the most interesting players that... Uh, Coach Leach has recruited. He coached a uh, club team over there for a while. In fact, that's how he started his coaching career. Works the ball carrier for OU. Well, you gotta you gotta think that Texas Tech would like to have some of those first down drive plays over. When you throw three interceptions on the first play of three different drives, that's given Oklahoma the chance to get the ball back a lot more times in this football game. Here's another memo to the New York Times: USC leads UCLA 40 to two. If LSU <laughs> passes USC, <laughs> Arnold Schwartz, uh, we might get Schwarzenegger on this thing. 519, <laughs> second down and seven. He'll terminate him. Yep. Down at the 40 yard line. Nice tackle by Nitschman. Seth Nitschman. Another He's freshman. Down. Another one of those young freshmen that is being built into this defense here. Nine of 22 in the two deep. You know, you don't build a. You know, Mike Leach didn't build this offense in one year. You don't rebuild the defense in one year. So Texas Tech will always be able to throw the ball. They got to learn how to play a little better defense to compete in the Big 12. Again, Oklahoma driving toward the Nokia Sugar Bowl the night of January 4th. It will be a Sunday night. See what Jason White, the OU offense, could do on the third down. Clayton incomplete, and OU forced to punt. 
Well, they double covered Clayton that time. That was one of the first time I've seen Jason White not read the coverage properly. He had the slot receiver coming wide open right across the middle of the field. I think it was Travis Wilson, and he went to his favorite Clayton. Blake Ferguson. See if the Red Raiders come after him a bit here. That was, I guess the only problem we use had this year early on. Now they're going to set the return. Welker with the wind and went out of bounds, so it'll be spotted. And uh, let's check in with John. John, what's up with the LA Chenier? And uh, here, of course, we have 419 to go in the third quarter with the Red Raiders coming out from the 20 guard. With my Purdue education, I think they're 24 points down, so three eight-point plays. <laughs> That two-point conversion, they're not out of it. There's the end around. Francis, nowhere. Lost yardage. Well, we've talked about the Nokia Sugar Bowl, and you saw LSU, one of the teams in the chase. Let's focus in on the three leaders. You can see Oklahoma after this game, the Big 12 championship on the 6th. Now, USD also takes next week off, and then on December 6th, they have a home game with Oregon State. Pretty good Oregon State team. LSU, though, They've got the toughest road. Mississippi today, and they have a home game with Arkansas, and then the SEC championship. And if they draw Georgia, that'll be like a home game for the dogs in Atlanta. That'll be jammed with that Georgia red, and Ugg will be strutting around there. Second down. Simmons stumbles out of trouble to the 21 yard line. This will be third down, about nine coming up. Yep, Great have a pressure by Shelby and also Dan Cody was in on it. Yeah, Dan Cody's been doing the drop all day. That time they let him rush the passer. And one of those big six foot five defensive ends that has great talent and great effort on every play. That's why the coaches continue to talk about this guy. Fill him out, stick him in the NFL, and you got a 12 year defensive end in the NFL. Magnificent year. All the coaches around the Big 12 just just rave about him. They they start off with Tommy Harris and they say, but what catches our eye is the performance of number 80. Simmons gonna go deep. Out of bounds, incomplete. One of the few times that Oklahoma came right up the middle with the blitz. And Johnny Mack did a great job, little number four, of blocking the two linebackers, one of the two linebackers inside. Here's the punt team, Alex Reyes on the field for the Raiders. See, that was again one of those greedy throws that you know all you need is a first down, got man-to-man -man coverage, throw that fade. That's exactly what Oklahoma wants you to do is throw the fade when they're blitzing like that. Perkins would love to set sail. Timeout has been called. Time for many now. We'll have the uh, thrifty car rental post-game report with the John, Terry, and Craig, they'll get you up to date. And we check in down below with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, I feel right at home. As you know, my wife, Wendy, raises horses. So I'm here with Midnight Matador, but they won't let me ride the horse. What? what? <laughs> That's it? That's it. <laughs> here I go again. <laughs> Muckling, mucking stalls again. All right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's watch the running back do the dirty work on Teddy Lehman right here. Johnny Mack's going to come from the left side. Lehman's coming, and uh, little number four takes Lehman down. If you're going to run the ball at Texas Tech, you better pass for Tech at Texas Tech. Antonio Perkins, the return man, and he's uh, setting up shop inside the 50-yard line. You can see if Oklahoma doesn't come after him. Nope, return. Play, play, play. Oklahoma yes. almost turned it over, and did they? Yes. Wow. They did. The Red Raiders. Cody Fuller. And you wonder if the win, Cody Fuller, one of the wide receivers, Recovers this. It hit the it hit the blocker, Brent, who was trying to uh, do. Yes, it actually did. It hit the guy who was trying to block one of the Hawks. 
that time. And that's what it didn't even get the Perkins on the play. It hit number 13, Eric Bassey, I think, for Oklahoma, who was trying to block on the return. And Perkins almost recovered it. Yep. And that replay couldn't get the handle. That allowed Fuller. And it gives Simmons and the Red Raiders half a field to work with. He throws this one away. He lives to fight another day. Second down and 10. Pressured that time by Jonathan Jackson, 49. With this offense, you're not out of it when you're down three scores, but you are facing the Oklahoma defense, so we don't want to overhype that. Right. It's not going to be easy for Coach Leach. And the Oklahoma offense. It's not likely to stay at 42. That's the problem. They got another quarter to score also. We have 60 points in this game, and we're not through the third quarter. Three wides for the Red Raiders. And using Mack as the running back. Allen with a stop in the middle. That's one of their staples. They run the ball inside by faking the, the sweep to a wide receiver all the time. Did it against Texas 10, 11 times, and they've done it today six, eight times. Mike Leach is the guy who signals the plays into a, a wristband, so there's no way Oklahoma can steal the plays or know his signals. over to the left side on the... There's Teddy Lehman right there. Might as well keep an eye on him. Fired low, diving reception at the 30-yard line, just short of that first down. Where the old red flag might be coming out if this was the NFL on that one. Did that skip, or did Peters get his hands underneath it? Peters, uh, Simmons wanted to go left side, didn't have anything over there, and then came back, felt the pressure, kind of throws sidearm. This is what he does on this one. Did he get it under there? Oh, yeah, he did. Nice play. Good call. Here's Peters your kicked. fourth down. Mack is the running back. Need to reach the 29. You can see the yellow line. You can see for yourself. See what Tech decides to do. They're going to try to run Mack for it. They got it easy. He just bolted across. He's been a good-looking running he sure back. sure has. Here. Junior college transfer, redshirted a year ago. Came back this year and is getting some uh, turns when Henderson needs a, a blow or if kind of a change of pace you put Mack in. Final minute. That's well, that's about the third or fourth time they've gone for it on fourth down. Hasn't been too successful, but that time they picked it up. So for the fourth quarter, Simmons and the Red Raiders will have this breeze at their back. Not that they've been able to do much with it so far in this game. The final 50 seconds of the third quarter. Man. No space. No it? yak. No as space. Nicholson makes the hit on Welker that time. I mean, yards after catch, they just forget about it. Yeah, and that's what this offense just kind of thrives on against less talented defenses. You're seeing Oklahoma, because they move so well, react to the ball. But now, as it gets inside the 20, one time they've been able to stuff it in. The other times, this Oklahoma defense has kind of forced problems. Now there's the brace on the left knee. And of course, that has hindered Simmons mobility, quick flash screen, and got the first down. I believe it's right at the marker. Let's see where he marks it. We're going to put it right down. Pull the defender over there on Mickey Peters as the third quarter comes to an end. We can still have some entertainment left in this one. We'll be back with it after this message and a word from our ABC station. Indeed, the Sooners have been taking care of business, but they came up just a few inches short on that measurement while well, you all were away. So we got third and short. Now on these short yardage situations, uh, five foot six inch Johnny Mack been able to squirt forward and pick it up here. Two downs to get it. They're going to throw for it this time. They're going to go for the touchdown. Incomplete. Well, it's and it's fourth down coming up. He figures he can come down and get the uh, 
and get the first down, I guess, on a running play yeah, with, they, uh, with Mack in this situation. See, they huh? ran out real quick, and they, they had hoped that Oklahoma would think it was a short yardage running play, and then they tried to steal one. Yeah, that's, yeah. A good, that's a good chance. Yeah, you know, when you're that far down. What do you think? Can these guys uh, score a couple here with the wind at their back? I think they can score a couple, but I think Oklahoma can score a couple, too. That's <laughs> <laughs> they're so a the joy service. to watch them. They really are a joy to watch them. They really are. And uh, here it is. Of course, they're going for it here on this situation on fourth down. They run this one, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Oh, he fumbled it a little. But Simmons put his helmet across. The yellow line, the unofficial first down mark down there. The umpire spreading them out. And they got the first down. And let's check in with John on uh, Mississippi. Are they coming back, John? And here in the land of the Big 12, the Red Raiders in the red zone here. First down at the 18-yard line, B.J. Simmons. Trailing the number one team, 42-18. Middle, got it. And a first down. And that was Carlos Francis from Fort Worth. He already has more than 1,000 yards Great this season. Patience. And straight's hurt. Oh, yeah, he did. Came down with his left elbow arm or something there, huh? Great patience by B.J. Uh, Simmons that time. Wanted to go out here, but didn't have it. And then he came back and dropped it off right inside to his checkoff man. That's what you got to do. You don't have it downfield, don't feel comfortable. Remember, drop it off, live to play another game. Eric Bassey has replaced the injured straight, straight back on the bench receiving medical attention. Out of bounds at the two yard line that time. So Wes pulled. Welker picks up more yardage and Nicholson with the stop. If you're going to throw these quick plays, you got to have a quick release, and he does. B.J. throws it quick, gets it out in front of the receiver. Wes Welker's like a running back, one of those smallish receivers that's almost a run-and-shoot type play. Remember the old Mouse Davis run-and-shoot? That's exactly what that play was. Great picture for an OU fan to see straight come right back on the field here. Second down and goal from the one-yard line. Get that two-point play ready for Texas Tech. And I believe this is Henderson who has replaced Mack as the running back. Set in the eye. It's Henderson speeding toward the goal line. Got it. Touchdown, Red Raiders. And they will go, obviously, for two points again. An awful lot of time and a stiff breeze at the Red Raiders back here. I always like to watch a quarterback after he's had a bad day and a lot of interceptions. You know, great hitters can hit home runs when they have two strikes. And look what B.J. has done. They're going to kick this one. You know, with a 24-point lead, that might not be a bad. They got the win to tie the game up. That might not be a bad strategy. I'm sure it is the win, yep. Gary, that uh, changed his mind. Absolutely. Right? So here's two good. The freshman nails it. It's now 42-25. Mike Leach on that board. And the Red Raiders are not done yet in this one. The good hands team is on the field for Oklahoma in case Texas Tech decides for the onside kick. There are two deep men, not that deep, but they're standing back at the 20. Now, if Texas Tech gets a signal to go ahead and take it deep with this wind, too good, will kick it out of the end zone, and uh, the breeze now blows it off the tee. So they have to decide what to do. 14 minutes left in the game in regulation, 42-25, Sooners with the lead. And Leach back there discussing strategy with his coaching staff. 42-25 is 17. That's why Mike Leach went for the extra point. Two touchdowns and a field goal ties it. And now Leach is getting word upstairs from the coaches on the alignment. And they will pass the signal along to the freshman. All right, that means Oklahoma will bring it out on the 20-yard line. The Pack Life game summary. Jason White, 18 of 28. And B.J. Simmons breaks a record today, 28 of 47. Most passing yards in the season. Mark Clayton, seven catches, 121 yards. And Simmons had one picked off by straight, who brought it back 97 yards, just short of the goal line. But now... The Oklahoma offense led out by center Vince Carter, Kelvin Chasen, Wes Sims, Davin Joseph, Jamal Brown.
That first unit offensive line. They need to occupy a little clock time here. Keep the ball away from Simmons and the Red Raiders. Drop it off into flat Will Peoples, and I believe that's his first catch of the game. Johnson makes the stop. And uh, Jack, what's the mood on the uh, Sooner sideline? Well, Brent, it's very low key. In fact, not only are the players low key, but some of the coaches that you and I are so used to seeing them being demonstrative, you know, Mike Stoops and Brent Venables, they're very low key right now as well. But one guy that wasn't low key just moments ago was the head coach, Bob Stoops. He tried to rally not only the guy standing on the sideline, but the coaches as well. Jack, while you were giving that report, <laughs> we had a great shot of one of the assistants, Yanni. Exactly. That tells it all. Second down. And the Red Raiders hold in the middle. Chris Hudler, 93. Another red shirt's in there on top of Jones. Yep, another one of those freshmen. 310 pound freshman, number 93, right there. Throws off block inside by David Joseph. Stands him up and just stops the ball. See, this is what this is what you wonder about with Oklahoma. The only chance you have is they really don't run the ball comfortably. Okay, they have to keep throwing, and the game is very long. 47-15, USC leads UCLA. This is third down. White in the gun. Left. Got the first down at the 31-yard line. Mark Clayton defended by Jabari Smith, who transferred from a JC in Arizona. So we are live from West Texas, Lubbock, Texas, home of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. 12 and a half minutes to go in the number one team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners leading Tech 42-25, just inside of 12 and a half minutes. That was a big third down pass. Clayton now with eight catches for 125 yards. They sure do look at Clayton on every third down play. Breaking the daylight is Works. Solid first down play for about seven yards. Meeks stops. This is Meeks. Young safety, sophomore safety did a nice job on Works, who's healthy. Had that bruised back, but coming right out at you, running the ball. This is what Bob Stoops brought in Kevin Wilson, the old offensive coordinator from Northwestern when they had that run there, running the ball very well with Damian Anderson. Brought him in to teach this offensive line just for situations like this, when they had to run the ball, when they had to run the ball and take clock, can Oklahoma do it? Second and three, 11 and a half minutes. Jones breaks the daylight. Crosses midfield to the 45. Whistle sounded prior to the ball coming loose that time as Mika Sweats, number 38, making the stop for the Red Raiders. Same play that Oklahoma scored all the touchdowns on. Kiwan Jones coming, pulling the backside guard, coming right up from behind. It was power football this time. Number 77 just follow Big Joseph. And if Vincent Meeks hadn't got his arm on him right there, I think it would have been another 15 yards. This has got to look good to Oklahoma fans and Bob Stoops. Have to run the ball, and you're able to run the ball and eat clock and make first downs. Works the running back. Runnels stays in as the fullback. They have thrown to him a couple of times here today. He stays to block. And Lang is sacked for the third time today, back at the 46-yard line by Chris Hudler. Very good coverage downfield that time. Jason White said, I don't want to put the ball up for grabs. We've already turned the ball over twice in this football game. This time he looked back there, nothing there. And comes in motion, safety in the middle of the field this time. No problem, nobody open. Here comes Big Hudler. Good job. Take a sack. Oklahoma so far has run three minutes and 17 seconds off the clock on this drive. Keeping the ball away from the Red Raiders. Down to 10-18. Second down. Into the left flat is Works. Daylight. First down at the 31-yard line. Huffman making the stop for the Red Raiders. And the Sooners again are on the move. And we check in with Jack. Well, Brent, usually the best vertical leaper on a football squad, as you know, would be a wideout or a DB, right? But the OU back that you just saw run there, Ronaldo works. It's 6'10", 220 pounds. How about a 10-foot, a 2-inch broad jump? 
and a 37-inch vertical leap. He can get up as well as get down the field. I think they've changed that to long jump, haven't they? I don't know. I'll have to check. Standing you had to tell me that my age. Show my age. Standing broad jump. <laughs> Politically correct, I guess, right? <laughs> Boy, Hudler is playing some football right now. And they don't. 93. He's blowing them up in the he middle. He sure is. That's a good sign. You know, you look for things in football games like this. Who's going to emerge? Who could you be counted on? Look at that guy. He kind of paints his face into the helmet right there. And that's a guy that's going to be around here for three more years. Second down and long. Now we're inside of nine minutes, and I've got the Sooners having run four and a half minutes off the clock with this drive. And so if Mike Leach had it to do all over again, he would try the onside kick. Yeah. But who knows? You know, they had to convert a couple of third downs, at least one that I remember. Second down and long now. Here's Jones on the toss left, keeps the clock running to daylight to the 25-yard line. And a reminder that after leading their teams to incredible overtime wins in the conference finals, Landon Nonovic and the San Jose Earthquakes battle Chris Armas and the Chicago Fire in MLS Cup 2003 tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern on ABC Sports Championship Television. Landon Donovan, didn't I read that someone took him out to a football field? He never played football. On, hey, he whacked a field go, goal, 60, really? 70 yards yeah, or something. Makes sense. Probably could do with both feet, too, couldn't he? Yeah, indeed. Third down and two here for the Sooners. Now they have eaten up over five minutes on that clock, getting it down to eight minutes. They'll kick a field goal, too, if they get a chance. Helmet off. Jones for the first down. To the 17 yard line and Tim Norman. Norman lost his helmet on the play. Well, they lost Ryan Aycock early, and uh, Brent talked about that number 28, their leading tackler and interceptor. And I think uh, Tech has done about as well as they could considering the interceptions that, to stay in the football game. Yep. We've got a timeout here with eight minutes to play. First and 10, 8.06 to go, 42-25, 17-point lead right now with eight minutes to go. Tech first down, and there are some folks pulling for some more points in this paper. All right, Tech's Tech has no timeouts left, so it's going to be at least three more minutes on this drive. Toss play to Jones, daylight 10. Five down at the three-yard line. They've eaten up six minutes on this drive. And they've had 11 plays, and they've run it eight times so far. Well, remember this Tech defense, and this has been their problem. You know, they're giving up 200 yards a game rushing. And if you had to run the ball at them, I think successfully you could. Just a pitch play, going to get the hook to the outside. You can see it stunt inside by Texas Tech by the defensive end, and Kiwana just run free into the secondary. Jones, three touchdowns on the day. First down and goal. Let's see if they run that play again. Pull the backside guard, follow from behind, and stiff it into the end, stuff it into the end zone. Impressive drive as Texas Tech had mounted a mini rally here in the fourth. Tight eye running formation. Shift the power over to the left. Looking for four. A yard short. Well, let's check in again on Ole Miss. Have they taken the lead, John? Well, Brent, they were looking to tie the game. Jonathan Nichols had already missed one in the game. He'd missed one all year before that. That's his second miss, 36 yards out. So it remains a three-point lead for LSU. Ole Miss with the ball. Interesting day as far as USC is concerned. Ohio State has already lost. LSU in a dog fight against Mississippi. Oklahoma trying to win by more than 20 here. Second down and goal. 640. There it is, his fourth touchdown. Jones walks in. Keywan Jones, four touchdowns on the day. Same play on all four of the touchdowns. Power O. This time it was Kelvin Chasen, number 70, coming right at you. Pull the backside guard. 
kick out by J.D. Runnels right there and just walk into the end zone. That is what Bob Stoops wanted to finish off. Take a good, well, they were a great team. They won the national championship. Make them even better with Kevin Wilson right there, who kind of congratulated Kevin Jones, right, to Kiwan Jones, to be able to run the ball for tough yards. Ray DiCarlo. Tacks it on. So Oklahoma moving closer and closer to Bourbon Street. All new season. Six and a half minutes remaining. And you know when you think about this Oklahoma team and you harken back to the great teams that Barry Switzer had, when Barry was asked to, you know, compare and Barry says, well, the one area where we could hold up to this team is at running back. And you can't argue with that. Billy Sims could play for any Oklahoma team and some of those great running backs. But he goes on to say that the rest of this team is better, faster, bigger than we were. The Selmans, he said, of course, could have played. Yeah, but I it's interesting so. when you talk to Barry about comparing great teams of the past with this one. And this has got a chance to go down. Fumble! Well, Tech got it. Look at that. So again, the schedule for Oklahoma. They'll be off this week. They go to the Big 12 title game to play Kansas State or Missouri. K-State and Missouri go at it tonight in Manhattan, Kansas. Then if they stay one or two in the BCS, of course, as expected, they'll head to New Orleans and the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Mike Leach and the Red Raiders will be going to a bowl. They don't know which one, of course, but they are bowl eligible this year. First down and 10 coming up for Simmons and the Red Raiders. They're down 24 points with 6.26 to go. They'll try to rally here and put another one up on the board. Double pass. Here it comes. Incomplete. The second throw by Mike Stoops here. got it. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the future Arizona coach. <laughs> 12 men on the field for Oklahoma on that one. Mike Peters right there, high school quarterback, actually came here as a quarterback. And uh, if uh, Stoops didn't get it, Venables would have got it right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> like, looking out there at the quarterback. <laughs> that was a great look on Stoopsy's face. 49-25, again the score, 6-20. Incomplete, and it's third down, as we remind you of the small alias. She I know what happens next. She wears a wig <laughs> and some really good looking dress in the middle of the show. <laughs> I count on you for all of five times. <laughs> A football my, game my, somewhere uh, that I'll be watching. My wife Chris, gets very upset when I watch this show. Okay, they're <laughs> down at 10. You obviously were not in the audience for Victoria's Secret. Right. Though, right? <laughs> Simmons Cody, wrestled huh? down, thrown to the ground at the 32. And uh, uh, how about LSU now, John? Did they respond? They have it. They'll run the clock out closer than some expected. A three-point win for LSU. They stay unbeaten, and they'll jump into that three spot. As we project ahead, I should never do that with the way those wacky computers have been spitting out rankings, but uh, Oklahoma certainly will stay one. USC now figures to jump to two. What a punt, wow. huh, with the breeze at your back. Uh, I'll tell you. Reyes let that one go. George, how far was that punt? 67 yeah. yards, baby. Yeah. Got a good future as a punter down here, especially with a 25 mile an hour wind your back. Timeout. Dropped Ohio State out of an opportunity, apparently, to defend the national championship. They won the Fiesta Bowl a year ago when they upset Miami. So now you're looking at a team that figures to be there, Oklahoma. Jones, a strong presence for OU, especially inside the five, as we check back now on your BCS standings presented by Allstate. Gary can just draw a line through number two and number eight because there's going to be a whole lot of shaking going on. Now, the Georgia-Tennessee thing is kind of interesting because that could still figure in how they sort out the SEC East if they stay that close to each other and the win in that situation would go to Georgia. The third-place team, Florida, will be eliminated. And Georgia, having beaten Tennessee, would advance to play LSU if LSU beats Arkansas 
next week. Then it would be LSU and Georgia for the SEC championship. Here in the Big 12, it will be Oklahoma for sure against either Kansas State or Missouri. And again, those two teams go at it tonight in Manhattan, Kansas. Just a few minutes. Don't they start just in a few minutes? Is that right? Kick it off. Well, you take over here. I'm going to go watch <laughs> You know, Brent, we have word all this criticism of the, of the uh, computers that uh, they've hacked into your credit card and you owe a lot of people a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> And, and your travel reservations are sending you to Dubuque after the game, too. <laughs> Those eight guys are very upset with you right now. Throw those computers out. <laughs> the eight of them. They got no credibility. Third time in two. There's a whistle prior to the play. Let's check it down below with Jack. Jack, uh, help me out up here. Thank you. Well, I got a question for Gary. Gary, when you were playing quarterback, were you superstitious? No. Well, Jason White is superstitious. In fact, since the beginning of the season, one of his main superstitions has been that he wears the same pair of socks in every <laughs> game. But what's even worse is he picked up a superstition from Josh Heupel. When Heupel and the Oklahoma Sooners went to a national championship, Heupel didn't cut his hair until the middle of January. So Jason has decided to do the same thing. You know, the, the, those things work a, a lot better when you're playing for the best team, too. All those superstitions do. Third down and seven. Surprise. Oh, breaks free. Here comes Jones again. Cuts back. Headed for the end zone. Keywan Jones goes 77 yards after rushing for three. Keywan Jones now has put up his fifth touchdown of the game. Not only that, it's one of those stats that uh, Jason White's going to be able to tack onto his game to put him close to 400 yards, 22 for 32, four touchdowns. And that, uh, this is one of those plays that no one's really going to remember, but when you look at the stats at the end of the year, might just one of those one-yard passes get him a Heisman Trophy vote somewhere, right? Not everybody watches all these games. This was an amazing cut by Kiwan showing you the team speed of the Sooners as they put a 55, a 55 up on the Red Raiders here. And uh, Marcus Boyd being helped out of the field. And, and he just put a move on Marcus Boyd as he approached number 11. And uh, Marcus Boyd appeared to pull something over there trying to make, make the stop. We get the final LSU 17, Mississippi 14. So the uh, final in and LSU stays in the chase for the uh, BCS championship game the night of January 4th in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And of course the team that has figured to be there all season long. The last time that a team went wire to wire in college football was 99 Florida State. And Oklahoma is attempting to do it this year. As DiCarlo attacks on the extra point. Gary, I, it's amazing what Kiwan Jones has done. He's run for four touchdowns and caught one touchdown pass. The running touchdowns inside the five yard line just pounded away. What Gary told you was that power look. They just kept coming with it and then the pass. Yeah, a little drop pass. Not like, even like Oklahoma was trying to score here. They were just trying to move this change a little bit, keep the ball, and finish up. And all of a sudden, a one-yard pass gets him a touchdown. I was going to say right before that snap, I might as well rat myself out. I'm a little surprised Jason's even in the game. I mean, might as well get your backup quarterback a little work. But, you know, nothing dangerous was happening there. We were just pitching the ball and flopping it out to the outside. And Oklahoma, again, puts up 50 points for how many times this season? Six times they've been 50 points or more? It's unbelievable. Maybe an all-star team should show up in New Orleans and play well, these guys. According to some experts uh, from the West Coast, our ABC crew, that is an all-star team out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm anxious to see them. We'll be uh, down there. and. Uh, so you don't give Oregon State a chance for the upset. You think USC. Well, if, if Oregon State knocks off a team with a chance to get into the championship, uh, that, would be, that would be a tough focus one. Then they weren't very good. Well. 
Coming up, the mad move of the week, and we've had a lot of them to choose from in this yeah. game. Let me tell you. Close your eyes and grab one, right? It's got to be a suitor that they've selected. Has to be somebody from Oklahoma. We'll see what they come up with here. The mad move of the week. 307. OU puts a 56 up. Yeah, it is amazing. You can almost, it, it, it did appear that Oklahoma almost sleepwalked the whole second half and still put up 56 points in this football game. Go! There's the quick pop out toward the first down. And let's check in now on our mad move of the week. <laughs> It was a double pass with the <laughs> offense defensive coordinator, Mike Stoops, who <laughs> led them to five interceptions with his regular guys, and he had one himself. There it is. <laughs> the sixth interception, only that one didn't count, right? We've got an injured injured player down here. Uh, we got one of the Sooner players down. And you know, uh, Jason White, we were all set right. to give him the Chevy MVP, and what a wonderful game he had, 22 of 32 for 389 yards, four touchdowns, and no interceptions. But then Jason knocked himself out of contention. <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he put the ball back in 20's hands, because how do you overlook a guy with five touchdowns right. in, a, in a college football and game? I, and I think Oklahoma was just trying to get uh, Jones on the clock. 100 yards rushing, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden they're, they're going the other way. This is, this is pretty amazing stuff. I really don't see who's down out there. I, I hope it's not a. It's, oh, it's, oh, it's it Allen and another see, that, linebacker. That's oh. what I was talking about, about whether okay. you want your starters in at the end of these games like this. It's not necessarily you're criticizing them for running up the score, but if you lose a starter in a game that's over, you wonder. Ah, he's on scholarship. He's okay. <laughs> well, they, you know, they got three or four of them. The next guy might be better uh, than this guy. Who heck? knows? Time for many of the course. We'll have the Thrifty Carver in a post game report. We'll have John, Terry, and Craig we have highlights and analysis. This is rivalry Saturday. The big one, Michigan, winner in Ann Arbor. Knocks the Buckeyes out of championship. Can Central. I say something about sure. the Buckeyes? I thought they played magnificently today. I mean, they never gave up. They showed why they were champions. Inside shovel pass. Mac, uh, check that. That was uh, Bonga Wonga. Now here's our Chevy players of the game. Kiwan Jones of Oklahoma, the five touchdowns did it in that last play, 160 total yards. And Adele Duckett, six tackles and two more sacks, 14 and a half, I believe that gives him. That's the record here for a season and a recognition of their effort. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Kiwan Jones on the day, 22 carries, 83 yards and four touchdowns and of course the 77 yard touchdown reception and we're down inside of the final two minutes and uh, my apologies to Oklahoma it was not the sixth time they had 50 points plus it's the seventh time they had 50 points plus. gotta give them some credit <laughs> well the only time they were pressed at all was Alabama and of course uh, Bob Stoops came up with that fake punt and they won that 2013 but I don't believe they were pressed in the fourth quarter we didn't do that game Gary we right. picked them up the next week at UCLA and uh, we've been fortunate enough to cover a lot of the Oklahoma games the last two years and, and I'm here to tell you I haven't seen a team that can play with them. You, can tell you, that right well, you, thought, you thought they were the best team last year yes, in a lot, I I, and I, I would not disagree with that I think USC and Oklahoma Ohio State and Miami were the best four last year and I think you know Oklahoma's been the best four this year there's no doubt about that probably the best this year I'm really looking forward to USC if it comes down to it and but there is one thing I want to point out I would not count Kansas State out they're going to have a tremendous following if they get yep. into the Big 12 championship it could be very cold up there in Kansas City uh, Oklahoma had to go through them Gary to the last uh, yes. title and that was a three-point game that was a tough football game up there of course Jason White is so efficient and, and, and the other thing is it, they've got a defensive line those four guys they're the best sacking defense in college football they could put pressure on with just their defensive line now we talk all about Kansas State and watch Brad Smith and Missouri go knock them off this well week. that could happen Brad Smith's <laughs> a great great football player yep. and you know uh, congratulations also to uh, 
to B.J. Simmons uh, on the year he's had. And he broke Ty Detmer's record. I know it was a disappointing Saturday for him here today uh, under the ABC lights and uh, up against the number one team in the nation. And, uh, five intercepted passes, six if you count Coach Stoops on that far <laughs> sideline. But it's third down and seven. It's just been a great year for him and uh, Coach Mike Leach, all these people up here on the staff have uh, been so helpful for us. Go just some great football foot, fans up foot. here in Lubbock, some awfully nice people, and I'm sure they too are disappointed. There's his single season NCAA record now. He went right past Ty Detmer. And uh, that interception total, he'll fall out of that uh, yeah. that ratio where he was way up in there, wasn't he? They was, will. Uh, they, they'll also be a tough matchup for anybody who faces them in the bowl game because for playing for this pass happy team, that's fun. That's like going playing basketball in a bowl game. They'll just go out there and rip it around and throw it 65 times and be fun for them. And right. everybody else you have to block and tackle for two years. Well, the SIDs here: Chris Cook and Blaine Beal, Oklahoma first. Kenny Mossman, his usual outstanding job and help for everybody. Is Simmons here is it out deep and complete, and uh, we thank the executive producer of ABC Sports, Mike Pearl, senior producer Bob Toms, the coordinating producer of college football on ABC, and the producer of the game today, Bob Goodrich, the Texan himself. Bobby G, nice job down there with our director, Larry Cam. Larry was awfully happy that Michigan beat Ohio State today. And our TD, Monty Poling, associate producer, Drew Kaliski, he's produced the fourth quarter, associate director, Brian Fay, and our stats guys, Craig Rothberg, scoops himself from Florida, and Jason Polstein. Technical manager, Mark Towey. Christy Braby, the production manager. What a great job she does. And of course, our assistants, the Sun Devil and Dr. Graphics himself, Ian Gruka. And along with Marla Kiefler, they do a great job. Mark Loomis is the director of production. Special spotter today, Scott Musburger, while our regular spotter, Brian Bovelson, spends the weekend in Hawaii. Stage manager is a Yankee himself, Wellington Wilmore Jr who has uh, done his usual outstanding job. And we've got a penalty flag coming down here. We get ready, my friend, for next week. We get a little prime time with uh, Miami and Pittsburgh, and then we get ready for that Big 12 championship, and then off to New Orleans we go. We're going to be seeing a lot of these Oklahoma yeah, rascals. We, we could get them out, well, obviously, three times in a row. The people are telling us that even if they lose, they get there. And uh, I guess that's the way it goes. If that would happen, it wouldn't be my way to do it. but. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Stoops has a good way, a good team here. He's built a great program. I hope he never leaves. I agree with you. Yep. I hope he stays here. You know, uh, yeah, I, $2 million in Norman's kind of like $5 million in New York, isn't it? Yeah, I, I would think that Steve Spurrier is maybe telling him just how tough it is up there at that level. And, uh, you know, you, you just don't have better players no, than right. other teams that's in the exactly NFL. Exactly right. And you don't get to spend that much time in your time. I'm not going to end up that's great, and, and there's some coaches up there, including our friend Dick Vermeil, who's doing a wonderful job. But it's tough, and he's got something very, very special going in Norman, Oklahoma right now. They've improved the facilities over there. And he just uh, he just strikes me as a great, great college football coach who yes. could become a legend of the game as time unfolds. You know, he was very patient. Remember, he began his career. I don't know if people have probably heard this story a, a dozen times, but three years he stayed at Iowa as an unpaid graduate assistant to learn his profession. Absolutely. He paid his dues, yep. folks. He didn't do it the easy way. He wasn't born with a silver spoon. The old-fashioned way. And, uh, he's got a lot of friends on the other sideline, especially Mike Leach. And uh, looking for him right now is, is Coach Stoops and uh, Oklahoma taking dead aim at the national championship. And there are the good buddies. Stoops, of course, bringing Leach into the Big 12 as his offensive coordinator. He's impressed with what he did in Kentucky with Hal Mummy when he had the coach with him when he was an assistant in Florida. Jason White, the favorite for the Heisman Trophy. We send you down to Jack. And getting some congratulations as uh, Bob Stoops continues this conversation with Mike Leach. As you said, Brent, Good friends. Hey, Coach, congratulations on a completely undefeated season in regular season play. It's really special. I, I very feel, feel very fortunate, very blessed to work with these players, these coaches, and, uh, we, you know, to, to go through this 12-0 and 0 is really special and um, excited for guys like this. Yeah, I want to talk about this guy for a moment, Jason White. Jason, a great a great day for you. Congratulations for you and your team. Thank you. Well, it was all the way up for both sides of the ball. It was, it was a great win. All of a sudden, I looked up and I thought Kiwan Jones reminded me of Quentin Griffin. What's going on there? <laughs> Kiwan ran hard in the second half, and uh, hey, if we can take another Quentin Griffin. Hey, Brent, they could use a Quentin Griffin, but they got Kiwan Jones. <laughs> yes, indeed. They got the whole package. Good job, man. 
So Jason White and the Oklahoma Sooners take dead aim at another national championship. And a reminder that ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Don't forget now, folks, Monday night, a battle of two desperate NFL teams, Giants and the Buccaneers, 9 Eastern. Be there once again. The Sooners roll on 56-25. For Gary and Jack, I'm Brent. So long, everybody.